boom and we're live um there's crazy issues with internet all over the place we think it's because of the cavalier game but you are here with the mellow riot podcast guys mike mataraki our guest lou ferrigno jr elliot in the production room and uh we have a lot on the plate today um i wrote actually i was driving in the car yesterday before i let lou start uh telling us about his fascinating life i was driving in the car yesterday and um i had a lot of thoughts um i had a th thoughts about like why people podcast um some of my favorite podcasts like joe rogan theo vaughn tinfoil hat i like those guys a lot and um i was thinking to myself one of the main one of the several of the main reasons of having a podcast uh is so that you can share knowledge obviously uh share friendship laughs and even love to an extent uh with your friends families families family fans of the show uh etc cetera, etc cetera. and so as i was driving yesterday listening to theo vaughn um, one of my favorite podcasts out there right now i found myself wanting to selflessly share what he's doing with anyone who's listening to us now today and i was thinking to myself uh, you know, most podcast consultants, if there even was such a thing, probably wouldn't recommend steering people to other podcasts. Obviously, on on the surface, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, like even from a business perspective. But it ties in with the point I wanted to make uh, here in a minute. And there's also a quote that popped into my mind um, as I was driving that made me think about people out there, um, like our guest, Lou Ferrigno Jr., for example, who is taking a journey uh, with his art and his acting and his other pursuits, which you're going to hear about here in a minute. Um, or us, for example, with Mellow Riot, starting a new podcast or anyone out there starting a new podcast or a new business or just wanting to take a gamble on something, take a risk. And it made me think of one of my very favorite quotes of all time by Teddy Roosevelt that I thought I would read quickly uh, and maybe help a few people out there find inspiration from this, I hope. And, but I have the quote up here on the screen. So give me one second, you guys. It's called Man in the Arena by Teddy Roosevelt. It actually gives me goosebumps like every other time I read it. I used to have a framed copy of it on my wall when I was a kid. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, and who comes out short again and again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. And it's interesting. Um, when you look at social media, there's so many people who hide behind their keyboard and send you derisive comments or, or a bunch of positive comments about the photos the photos that i posted for lou for igno one negative comment and the guy's like oh put your shirt back on idiot or whatever you know and it's yeah and um <laughs> you know it just goes to show like lou's trying to do something for himself and build a career i'm uh, uh elliot and i and my wife and and we're trying to build a podcast that people enjoy you know and and it just it always brings me back to that uh, Teddy Roosevelt quote. I love that quote because there are plenty of people in your life, whoever's listening right now or our lives, plenty of people who never try to do anything great. And you're going to fail a lot of times when you try and do something great, but at least you're trying, you know? And so don't, don't be bothered by those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. I wanted to say that today to sort of, and, and bear with me here. I'm going to be introducing Lou here in a second, but um, I wanted to segue into that. And so speaking of sharing and trying to help other people get what they want in life, it brings me to one last amazing quote by Zig Ziglar, the famous author and sales coach. 
uh, he said, help enough people get in life what they want and you too will have everything that you desire. And that's heavy, you know? And so like today I segue into introducing Lou Ferrigno Jr. Uh, because I want to remind people that it's okay to do nice things for other people and to help them out without expecting anything in return. And if you do it enough, the universe will work something out nicely for you as well. And that being said, uh, I'm excited to introduce my friend and artist and actor and model, Lou Ferrigno Jr., otherwise known in our tiny little circle as the Incredible Hunk. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard that before? Um, that's that's a good one. I have, okay. I, have, I, I, I thought I was being unique because for those who don't know, his father is famous as the Incredible Hulk, Lou Ferrigno Sr., and um, he's not as good looking as Lou, who is, uh, but um, nonetheless, here we are. And uh, that was a beautiful intro. Mike. Yeah, you, you like that? So, um, you know, I, I kind of had divine intervention as I was um, driving. Where we met, you mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By meeting you, uh, <laughs> the this, this skies parted. And uh, like I heard music when you yeah. walk through my front yard, <laughs> sort of angelic. Nice. <laughs> and um, so anyhow, um, let's see here. I'm looking at some quote. I'm looking at some messages on the, yeah. thank you, Joshua. Uh, I'm going to show this actually. Give me one second. Um, um, Joshua likes Eddie Roosevelt quote, just like I do. It's a good quote. And uh, it's very true. God, it's so hard to like respond to people and uh balance this guy next to me and yeah. uh the internet threw us a loop you guys i'm sorry uh i think it's there's too many people watching the cavalier game uh um, oh, there's too many people listening to the podcast yeah or there's yeah one of the two um uh, <laughs> so i'm gonna get into i'm gonna let lou do his thing here um i did kind of want to steer him in the right direction though for, for like for a lot of people who don't know Lou Ferrigno uh, was a great high school football player. Um, and then while at USC, he walked on to the UFC football team. And, and he happened to do it at an interesting time in history because they had arguably the most historic coach of all time and possibly the most historic football team of all time. And um, I met some of those guys through Lou. And that had to be a crazy time being at USC uh, it, right. It was it was wild. I mean, I I got there on my own accord academically, um, but I always wanted to go against the best to see if I could, you know, prove to myself that I could hang. Um, and I always wanted to, as a kid, dream of playing football for USC. Not necessarily having a career in football, but just to um, be on the team. Right. So, what was it like being around Pete Carroll and Brandon Hancock? And yeah, it was. Yeah. And, to this day, really, it's lasting. Um, uh, I mean, just being around, I think, being around people who have... Set, I mean, I forgot a few people. I mean, I, I, I haven't mentioned Alex. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Alex Alex tunes into one of these podcasts when he says... I mean, a lot of great professionals came from that team, from that era, um, that made a huge impact in the NFL. So just being around that level of greatness, uh, it, it rubs off on you. It's very real, and it's a special thing, because like the quote said you have to have those trials and tribulations and dust yourself off to get to that next level. Um, and so few people do. So it was nice to be around people like that. Um, man, who else? Who Reggie Bush, um, Reggie Bush. I, mean, I met, I met a couple of your teammates in our jacuzzi and yeah. 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 Lendell white. A number I think, of times. I think Lendell was at, in the jacuzzi yep. for about a day and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Too many cute. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, man, that was, nice. that was interesting. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was a good experience. It definitely taught me a lot, but it also taught me that, um, I set out to make the team. That was my goal was to make the team. And although I got injured, um, and everything worked out the way it did, I achieved my goal of making the team, which makes me think, what if my goal was to be an all American probably wouldn't have been all American. But it may be I would have gone beyond just making the team. Maybe I would have seen a lot of action on the field. Maybe I would have made a couple of plays that were huge. You know, if, if, I, if I dreamt bigger, could I have possibly gone there? So then I was like, what is the possibilities of your scope? You set those for yourself. How far can you go? Why not dream big? Yeah. No, it's – yeah, exactly. Just kind of like that segue I made earlier. If you're willing to do the work. Right. 
You know, um, one of the problems I had uh, before you met me um, in my 20s, I was I was uh, building a payphone and ATM business that I spent about 10 years building up. And then I sold it like right around 30. And that enabled me to move to Los Angeles and open up a bar, restaurant, nightclub and build some property and stuff. But I always thought I was a better, I always thought I had a better business mind than I would be an athlete. Like I really, really enjoyed playing beach volleyball and I, I, I played it for a long time after playing collegiate and I played on the Olympic team for a little while in between Olympics. I was on the training team for about a year or two. And uh, I think I just got too late of a start. I loved playing beach volleyball, but I was way too far behind like some of my contemporaries who were already winning tournaments by the time I started playing it. And uh, so that's just a huge like hole to dig yourself out of. But um, I did the opposite of what you said because I uh, always was building the business. And in the back of my mind, I knew that I had that to fall back onto. Like I did not commit to beach volleyball 100%. I committed it, I committed to about 85%. And I always, I, I, I probably like 54 times in my life, I wondered what would I, how, what, how much better would I have been if I like made this my only option in life, you know? And I just wasn't willing to find out. I didn't want to be living in my Volkswagen van mm -hmm. and not building equity in something. Sure. So I just wasn't willing to find out, but I give props to people who are ride or die. You know, they're just, they throw caution to the wind. And, nice. uh, and um, I don't know, you know, it's like those people like Jewel, you know, and she's living in her Volkswagen van, just playing coffee shop after coffee shop after coffee shop. And that she had no plan B. No. Um, and where is she now? Is she still recording? She's amazing. Yeah, she's still recording. I think she's a mom. Um, she's hot. Yeah, she's she's super inspirational too. Um, where was I going with that? But uh, you know, oh, there's a um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, there's a there's a punk band. I think, and my wife knows this too. I, I I've saw I used to see their sticker around town. Um, I think the name of the band was All Else Failed. You know, and it's like when you have no other option, you have to make the one you're working on work. You have to. You know, and I, I don't know. I always wondered, like, what if I did not have this business that was successful? You know, would I have been a better volleyball player? I just wasn't willing to find out. But enough about me. That's honest. <laughs> yeah, right? That's honest, though. At least you um, understand that. I don't know if you like talking about this, but because um, I don't know how much we can talk about your dad or not. But I was uh, thinking to myself the other day, I, I don't want to talk a bunch about your dad because I want this to be about you. But. I remember Marv Marinovich and his son, you know? Yeah. And so I had this vision uh, the other day of like you being four, five, six years old <laughs> okay. and your dad running in the room at like four 30 in the morning, turning a light on and making you do like several hundred supersets of like 30 pounds, 35 pounds, Drink like protein. Did, <laughs> did dad Drink. make you do like a couple thousand pushups before you, you know, went to Todd? bed? Do you know Todd? No, I don't you, know. Todd. Don't know Todd. I, oh. I just read a bunch about Marv Marinovich and his, training and his regimens it's, for his son it's crazy that at the end of the day his project essentially worked i mean his his son was a phenomenal athlete he managed to grow into what you know he hoped he would be physically but his principles were sound and they produced a fantastic athlete although there was the human element that um that led that to that story to end the way it did um but no my father was very um focused on his career and providing for his family. And he never pushed anything on us from a physical sense. He, uh, he's hard of hearing. He's, he's, uh, 85% loss in both ears. So that makes people a little different when one of your main senses is deprived. Um, when you're deprived of that sense. So our relationship is different. It's unique, but it's special because he's never expected me to do something or expected me to like work hard. Like him. I was actually a fat kid, Mike, to be totally honest with you. How heavy were you? Um, I mean, at, at around 11, I was about 185, five, six, 185, you know, yeah. as a kid going through puberty, I had man boobs. I had, uh, it was chunky, but it taught me a lot about, uh, the value that you can place in hard work that leads to change that you can actually see. Uh, but no, my father was not abusive and he did not 
forced me to do blurpees in the middle of the night. <laughs> That's classic. Um, <laughs> I, I'm looking at Regina's comment. Uh, thanks for listening, Regina. And you are absolutely right. Yes, we can talk about Lou some more. Please, LOL. I love it. Sorry. I'm a cunning yeah, linguist. Right? Yeah, I'm, you know, and uh, <laughs> I get on these, I get out of these rants. See, Regina knows what she wants. Yes. And I respect that. And her thumbnail photo looks, do you like, uh, you're not really into attractive blondes, are you? Uh, let me, is that her? Can't, is yeah. that Regina? I can't expand Regina on that. Yeah, I know. Hi, Regina. Hi, Regina. Um, give the women, give the woman what she wants. I know. I know. Right. Uh, Regina, we do have this feature on, uh, one of the positive things about the software program we use is that we can patch people in, uh, and they can ask live video questions. So if that's something you or anyone um, listening right now wants to do, um, let us know, actually just type in your email address as a comment. If any of you guys are interested and we will, um, uh, experiment with this new feature. So just let us know about that. I wanted to show some of your art, but I have to be able to download to the screen desktop. Uh, it says share your desktop screen. And so I got to figure out how to get the artwork onto the desktop, which I, I don't know how to do. I need to take better pictures of the artwork. No, but I think it's happening. Like, yeah, like how do I show this? I want to show this to people. Um, let me see one second. Save image as. Oh, maybe I can save it as a desktop. All right, bear with me, people. I'm trying. Lou has some art that he's very passionate about, and that was one of the many reasons I wanted to get him onto the show today. But it's also like looking for me, looking at that, relating back to the quote you said, is I see that, and I think it's you know it has it's it's okay, but compared to what the skill that I have basically create the, the, the images I create now based on the hard work and the actual putting the brush to canvas mm -hmm. shit tells me that you're growing from when you just repeatedly beat on your craft, you know, you're, you're growing, you're becoming better at something. And that in and of itself is one of the most rewarding things in life because you see the progress, right? I wish other people could see the progress. Yeah. Sorry guys, bear with me here. Um, our, we crazy internet issues with the championship game. And so our producer, I am having to produce the show and um, Elliot, who's amazing, was not able to, uh, the system crashed several times. And we think it's because of the you bandwidth. Four minutes, probably oh. 10 minutes. So the game is, you know, what? Hey, just, can you pull uh, pictures up on your phone? Sure. And I could put it in front of the camera. Sure. That would be way better than nothing. Yeah. Let me see if I can make this work. So here's a new one. That's really cool. That one's cool. Check that out. I'll start. Actually, I won't start there. Start something a little simpler. All right. I know. I'm trying to. I have people yelling at me in the chat room. Show the art. I'm trying, you guys. Uh, we're gonna show it. Hopefully, people don't mind. We're just gonna show it from a phone. I mean, how would that look? Uh, can you can you make look, it your whole screen? Uh, that's about it. The shitty pictures. Yeah, let me see. Let me see. Hold on one second. Sorry, guys. We're going like super caveman style here. Hold on. <laughs> All right. So that's one. The more impressive in person. Okay. So can you please describe this one for us? That's uh, just a generic pug. There's this one, which is really cool. So hold I, on. So hold on. First of all, generic pug. It's a generic pug. I do a lot I mean, of pugs. Were you thinking, this is were more you channeling my... Ansel Adams? I, mean... I was actually channeling Rembrandt. You see those Rembrandt? <laughs> I saw them. They're just like. I was thinking more Matisse. Okay. Yes. Nice. Yeah. He's post, post depressionist. I like hard lines. Right. Hard you, lines. You see the Matisse. Check this one out. Right. Show, show the folks this one. Oh, wow. So I painted that for a friend. What is about to happen here? Um, it's It looks seductive. I wanted to paint long legs, but what really was is the werewolf is a symbol for cancer. And so a friend of mine uh, just recently won uh, her bout with cancer. And it's just an attitude of bring it on slash here come, here it comes and you can't do much about it. And to many of people, it's a, it's a nasty beast. Um, 
but it's the attitude that overcomes and yes. keeps you alive and the humor about uh, just how you, you compose yourself in dark times. It really makes life worthwhile. So that Which, one's a really cool one. She's, I think. she's giving him the uh, come closer finger, but she's also a <laughs> come closer <laughs> finger, but she's also pushing him away. Cause, Oh, and he's got a hold of her. So that's which, more of like a jujitsu, like a uh, leg push. Yeah. It's like a knee lock. Right. <laughs> so what, lock. so what's sick? What's what, um, they need to see it though. They I know. I show. It. I'm going to show it again. So, what message is she trying to send this uh, scary werewolf? Is what I want to. Is it like get my pants or stay far well, away? <laughs> well, it's a little bit of both. It's that. It's that. It's that moment of of conflict. You've you had a, a date or two like that, right? Well, I paint my girlfriends <laughs> essentially. I don't have a girlfriend, right, but I'm I try show to it paint time. the women that I find attractive, and I think women that are warriors, women who um, who can be a shining light, but also well composed, I think is a very special, special thing. And it's, um, it's the people in life that make white life worthwhile, you know, strong, beautiful women that are completely naked in the forest. Like who doesn't love that? Right. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, that's a good one. There's Re another Regina one. I'm working loves on. It too. Hey, huh? Regina, Regina Geigenberger says that is deep. So nice. thank you for, do you know Regina? No, I don't. Okay. But, I don't know. Uh, Regina she either, sounds but... like an amazing person. Yeah. That's nice. So check this one out. So this one's cool. This one, here's another pug. These are generic pug eyes. Okay. So that's, generic pug. That's right. a big one. Um, hopefully we have some dog lovers out there. <laughs> um, yeah. Dog lover. A lot of pugs. Yeah. A lot of pugs. All right. I pay what I love. Yes. Pug life, right? Pug life. Pug life. I got some pug in me. Pug in me. All right. Look into my they're eyes. Just, they're so expressionate. For you those know, listening they, on iTunes, you guys are probably thinking that maybe we're doing peyote. Because <laughs> <laughs> you DMT, can't, it's called. You cannot. Yes, DMT. <laughs> so, so yeah, so art for me is something where it just happens. I can't. It's just I, I when there's not enough happening in my life or it just comes out of me and I need to. So I don't know. It's funny when people say this and that. and I'm flattered that people even like look twice at it, but. It's something that comes out of me that I just go with. And, and when I suppress that and I just don't do something else, it's it's a quarrel inside that I need. It just comes out and it makes me happier. Enough, I can be an earthquake going on around me or whatever. And I just be so focused. There's times, it's fascinating, when I'm completely shirtless. Well, I usually paint just about with just in my underwear just because I get paint everywhere. But it'll be freezing. Can we live room. stream that? Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure we would have I like it. Episode four least. or five. Yeah. That yeah. could be, I mean, I think Regina might actually. <laughs> Regina yeah. already bought the pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you guys. Then, while I'm painting. Okay, what are you saying? No, I put your website okay, cool. up nice, on the yeah. screen. So people um, who want to see all of Lou's art, we're going to show you about a half a dozen pieces. But for people who want to see all of Lou's art, go to louferignojr.com. It's on the screen. And um, so I did this one in two days. This last two days, I've been painting like crazy. Yeah, show me the stuff that this you want to show. Check that. Oh, you never showed me that That's one. That's fresh. That's the freshest one, the new one. Look All at right. her face. She's sexy. Okay. I said I paint my girlfriends. This one's sexy. <laughs> sexy. Look at that woman. All right. So what? what is the, uh, is this someone you met at uh, Gold's Gym? She looks little, like one of the trainers at Gold's Gym. She's a little buff. She needs bigger breasts, but she's Wonder Woman. I thought to myself, hey, I've never seen Wonder Woman's breasts. So why don't I paint them? Why don't I show myself Wonder Woman's breasts? Go close on the on the face. I know, but I'm getting like a little Sexy. glare here. Sorry, guys. How do I get rid? Oh, see the upper how light. The oh, there we go. That's what you got to do. Try that. Sexy. She's a little masculine. She's a little buff. Yeah, I would not. Um, but my with these... her as a trainer because she yeah. would probably rip into my muffin top and She's... make fun of me. <laughs> She's expensive. And you can pay people to abuse you, but. That's not at the gym. That's like a different service I was reading about. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, all right. So let's so, find, yeah. let's find something else. Naked women. I paint naked women. I like naked women. Oh, see, Regina says that's an amazing business idea. Really? Yeah. Live stream uh, naked painting. <laughs> you know the guy, What was the guy's name? Huh. Uh, there's some everyone like a lot of people listening right now are going to remember. Remember in like 1972. That guy who talked really quietly and he just painted with um, watercolors and those little. Oh, Bob. Bob. Uh... He had like a sick fro. Yeah. The, the fro guy with the, with the palette knife. He goes, no, they're balanced. Yeah. Uh, Bob Ross. 
Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah, I'd watch that. That show. would be amazing. Yes, Elliot said Bob Ross. All right. Anyone who wants a, an amazing journey down artistry lane, um, Google Bob Ross and then like video or something, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a little bit more exciting than uh, slow TV in Sweden. Have you ever seen slow TV? No. So you go to slow TV and there's a camera on the front of a train and it's like a 12 hour train ride and that's it. Oh. And then there's another one where there's an old lady knitting for like eight hours. That's it. And it's crushing it. They get like several million viewers. Have you seen the one where, they, TV. where the young Asian girl puts bread down and it's called breading and she smashes her <laughs> bread into <laughs> different breads. And then she, she, she writes, Hey guys, what bread would you like me to, to bread next? So she'll bust out and what slice, kind of shit are you a watching? slice rye. <laughs> that is a, a different channel. <laughs> and a baguette. <laughs> and she gets millions of views, Mike. Millions. What? That is some weird like, shit. I'll be doing Dude, the baguette This is tomorrow. a family show, Lou. This is a family show. It's, it's um, riveting television. All right. So, yes, Johnny. Thank you, Bob Ross. I, I get it now. Um, Johnny's yelling at me through our live chat. For those who don't know, um, you can watch this show live on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash mellow riot podcast. And you can interact with us via live chat. You can also text us your email address in, in the live chat and we will patch you in as a guest. Um, we are still experimenting with that new feature, but I do want to have people uh, being patched in. So anyone who's interested, let us know. Uh, so the the Golden State Warriors won 122 to 103. So why now are you telling people that? Like I haven't seen. I was planning on Tebowing it. Oh, because I'm up to the minute. Okay, you're ready. All right, go ahead. But now tell us a, about there it. should be a wave of of viewers ready to spill into a deluge of viewers. Fucking bread porn and yep. and and spoiler alerts. Uh, hey, if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> okay, do you want to just maybe play the highlights for us, and we can just show them? You want to see my moves? <laughs> Do you want to feel my pump? No, I don't. Um, all right. So, man, I, I got way off track here. Lou, with this fucking bread porn. What the fuck? Someone's going to watch it. <laughs> Apparently millions of people watch millions. it, right? Millions. All right. Those sick fucks. Um, all right. So I want to show. Can we show more of your art? You want to? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Let's do this. Um. Yeah. Lou Ferrigno Jr. dot com, and you can see. see hopefully, there'll be like a live stream of him painting naked off of his own website. But before that happens, we can make it happen. This we can do like a test run. Look at her. So that's another can one. Can you get my, rid of the header at the top? That's one. That's another one of my girlfriends. There, she's a flower, but she has like little flower boobies and a flower booty. Oh, and yeah. she see the wasps are trying to get after it, but she's like, oh, it's that moment of like, yo, I need to cover up these flower nipples because uh, she's, about to get she's stung. looks like she's saying oh i've never done this before essentially am i doing this right exactly is this how you do this yeah all right well let's see let's show everyone so it's cool it's it's i like it it's light i like it too. i I've like been, i've been I like told the, that my art is angry art but i think it makes me happy and it's cute that one's cute I just like the way it looks. You know, it makes, I like the way when I paint stuff and it turns out when I, it's like, it looks cool. So makes me yeah. happy, Mike. Yeah. Well, you got to, yeah, you need, we all need an outlet, right? We do. What else we got here? This one? That thing, it looks like the cat from Electric Daisy Carnival. This, or no. Uh, like Cheshire. Yes. Cheshire cat. It's like, Cheshire inspired. Uh, like Blink Win 82's best album. Right, honey? That's my wife's favorite album, Cheshire Cat. Blink Blink 182, I think it was. All right, here you go, everybody. So it's cool. It's vibrant. It uh, it, it really does take over a room, so it's hard for people to be able to. People are like, hey, I want to see your art. We're looking for new art pieces for a living room. It's They can be very powerful pieces. So it's, But I, I can't paint anything else. I paint exciting, never-before-seen, outrageously loud images. Uh, Wait, I, I have to post Regina's comment here. Hold on one second. 
it is becoming obvious that Lou needs a girlfriend. Yeah. Regina, how, how, um, sad. How, it's no, true. it's not sad. I'm just wondering, like, how you can, um, compensate for whatever signals you're giving off or is it or is it a good thing what do you mean well is it a bad thing that it's obvious you need a girlfriend or is that an act is that a positive what is that supposed to mean that's what i'm i'm trying to figure it out i I like it says i need a girlfriend right here regina says it's beginning i'm i'm happy painting I, I I paint my girlfriend. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. There you have it. The sex that gets complicated. There you have it. But that's still happening. <laughs> that's another video that yeah, I think. There's another pug. All right, cool. That's a good pug. Pug life. But see, when I have a girlfriend, I can't paint because all they want to do is like spend time with you and stuff. Exactly. And that just gets in the way. <laughs> yeah. Of pain, of painting. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Can you believe that shit? Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, Megan. Megan just chimed in. We're going to run a contest here. Here we go. I'm going to show Megan's comment. You just might be able to become his girlfriend, Megan. We are At the going... end of the podcast. Well, we're going to um we are going to run several different challenges. One is a trivial pursuit. Uh Lou likes smart and attractive women and then we're going to have sort of like a virtual but not perfect not perfect no just near perfect uh, i hate perfect or women. a lot like his mom yeah. uh, if you know his mom that's She's too a, perfect that's a huge plus because then you would know how you could behave all right so that is that's just a pug is that a prince or a popper that uh, that's uh it's like a king king pug okay cool. so I got it. Yeah, there's another one that's coming out that I'm <clears throat> almost done with, which is dope. Uh, it's like a beastly one. This one's tight. That one's Here's tight. a cool comment. Joshua Connor. That's a nice compliment. What do you say? That one's tight. I like it. I think Lou would be a great graphic novelist. I just posted that on Instagram. Whoa. That was tight, right? This is tight. It's called Love and Marriage. <laughs> is that why there's date, a big chain? Date night. Around <laughs> date night. Okay. Date night yeah. and love and marriage for those um, on YouTube or yeah. Facebook Live. This is uh, notice the symbolism there, people. I'm um, guessing the guy is the wolf, right? Yeah, yep, you got it. Okay, but I do when I do date a girl, I do ask her to help me with the taking the chain off. Yes. Okay. Taking the chain off. And it'd be, it'd be awkward getting in and out of a car with that monstrous chain it, it dent, around your neck. Dent the paint. Because what is she, does she throw it over the roof? Uh, and then she grabs it when she runs around? Yeah, she ties it to the back of the car. All right, cool. Or ties it. And so you're getting dragged behind the car. Yeah, but he's big okay. enough. You know? All right. So, people, um, we, in this podcast, we today, we actually have, uh, not right now, but we have two guests coming up after the cannabis hour. The Cannabis Hour, uh, we do every show. And at one hour, four minutes, and 20 seconds into the show, we do something cannabis-related. And so we've had guests on or we've had products or whatever. And um, i got to do something real quick. Um, I'm going to talk about something for just two or three minutes. And then after that, we have Master Chef johnny dinner time messina he's going to come on and this new little segment that we created called cooking up a conspiracy with johnny messina johnny is a fellow conspiracy theorist and we like to throw a little conspiracy talk into almost every episode do you, and do you throw conspiracies just to have discussion or do you really believe these conspiracies? just to, uh well a lot of them i believe and then some of them, I'm not sure what to believe, but they're just really interesting. Okay. Like, that's the thing I want people to... Um, okay, and then that segues into our other guest that's going to be coming on about a half an hour after Johnny. And Marilyn Hall uh, is going to talk about the recent... Well, she's she's English. She's a good friend. Uh, she is the mother of one of our friends. She's English. She knows a lot about the royals. She's going to talk about the royal wedding, and she's going to talk about some of the conspiracy behind the British royal family. So um, getting back to your question, 
Um, I'm fascinated by some of them. I love listening to Eddie Bravo. Eddie Bravo is really tight with Joe Rogan. I don't think Joe Rogan goes deep enough into some of his, like he talks about them, but I don't think he believes any of them. Whereas like Eddie Bravo is probably a lot more in line with my thinking. Like I fascinated by all of them. Some of them are weird. Like, you know, like a little far out there for most people to believe like David Icke, when he talks about shapeshifters or reptilian bloodlines running through all the Royal families throughout the world, our world's leaders, the Illuminus, Reptile uh, bloodlines, reptilian. Yeah. Reptilian. So like, have you ever heard, have, have you ever heard of the 12th planets or Niburu or Anunnaki? Anunnaki were those 12 foot tall, um, reptil- we descended from aliens type of thing. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Okay. So David Icke travels the world lecturing about, it. he gets several thousand people to pay a lot of money to show up to his shows. And I don't think he's wrong. I'm not sure he's right. I don't know what to believe, but what I found is that, Sorry, I'm foaming at the mouth. Does that mean I'm drinking, I'm talking too much? No, I'm enjoying. Enough it. about you, Lou. Let's talk yeah. about me. So- <laughs> okay, sorry. Drink guys. up, my drink up. Talk for a minute while I. While um, I-, I mean, I I don't want to be I don't want to be the party pooper, but you know, I, I consider myself I'm an atheist, so I like to see it. I need to see it, right? I do right. have my faiths and my beliefs, yes, but. I just feel like, what's your MO with the conspiracies? To convince people you're right? No, to- no, not at all. Like, Eddie Bravo talks about this a lot. Like, uh, a lot of people laugh at, at Alex Jones because of how animated he is. Or sure. He, he's out there. Sure. But when he talks about, I don't know, you know, 20 years ago, he was talking about one world government, one world religion, one world currency, which is all happening right now. Sure. At the time, you know, it's like when Magellan was in that room of elites in britain and he tried telling them the world was round and they were all laughing at him they're like everyone's laughing at him oh the world's flat dude what are you you're an idiot you know what's that saying in a room full of blind men a one man eye is king or something it's like you know it's uh the thing i don't like is i have some really i have some friends that i really like and i think they're sharp i think they're smart but when you start talking about stuff that they were not taught in school or like sharing uh no for example um i don't know of anyone who's watched loose change but loose change has been watched i don't know 80 million times on youtube it's an amazing documentary about 9 11 um and man you could talk about 9 11 for 20 hours but you take one of the things that's really famous about 9 11 is towers have you ever heard the term tower seven no okay enlighten me so Tower 7 was next to the tower that the planes um, flew into. And nothing hit Tower 7, yet it collapsed. And you can see in all okay. the different, and it's just boom, boom, boom. And it's like controlled demolitions. And there's fire chiefs on, on the news and on YouTube and being filmed saying, get back, we're going to pull Tower 7. Well, like guys in special forces will tell you, or demolitions, or people who are in construction industry tell you that pulling a building means you know, setting off the demolitions that are inside of it. And there's architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, and there's all these people out there. So it's like, <clears throat> it's an amazing cover-up by somebody. I don't, we're not getting the truth. And so- the, Of why the, that it just- Well, it of, of why of why those people were allowed to fly the planes into the Twin Towers and, and, and why there was a military, like you would have to- like most people don't haven't watched most people don't know that much about 9-11. They just sure. some people hijack some planes. Uh, it- te- there are terrorists out there and terrorists are bad. And we need to our government to protect us from terrorists. Okay. You know, you have to understand like false flag attacks and problems, solution, reaction. Like, you know, I'm going into some things I didn't necessarily want to go too deep into because this is like a whole nother five hour oh, yeah. episode with you. Where but, are you going? <laughs> but so Tower 7, you know, I get it. falls straight down. Nothing hit Tower 7. Okay. But Tower 7, uh, you know, but anyhow, so uh, what about what about I, Tower 7? Well, so it fell to the ground and but the it didn't fall over sideways. It the, all the floors are being blown out and it just comes straight down. So the conspiracy was real, but the theory is so there's a difference between a conspiracy and a conspiracy theory. There are millions of conspiracies a day. 
against like when two two or more people can conspire against someone else to enact their will upon them or to accomplish some sort of goal conspiracy theory starts getting into like the tinfoil hat conversations sure. and chemtrails and there's a difference between chemtrails and contrails and crop like circles crops well that's yeah so anyhow um get, <laughs> to make a short story long Marilyn hall is going to also uh come into the show uh after johnny messina and she's going to talk about some stuff but oh i was saying earlier like i have a lot of friends who i respect but when you start talking about something that they either did not learn in school or they did not see as truth on Snopes or CNBC or MSNBC, it can't be true. Okay. It absolutely can't. And, and if you guys know your history, you know that governments have lied to their people and done bad things to their people many, 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 many times. It happens and it can happen again. And I just don't want people to be sheep. I don't want them to say, you know what? I'm stuck in the matrix. And if my news station or my teacher or my government did not tell me that that's accurate, then it absolutely cannot be true. I just want people to like stand back and look at something objectively and go, wow, you know, it looks like someone is doing something bad here. And Very noble of you. Uh, whatever. Make the right. world a better place. <clears throat> I know, right? Uh, so I want to, I want to keep going with, um, what we were talking about here earlier. We talked about your art. Um, another thing that you're working on, which is amazing is SWAT. Yeah. Can you please talk about SWAT? So that's really cool. So I got, I'm very lucky with SWAT. Well, tell people what, tell people what we're talking about. SWAT is a one hour drama procedural, awesome action drama show on CBS, 10 PM Thursday night. Season one, we begin season two. Um, one of the best uh, new freshman dramas on television, on network television. Network is where it's it's a good place to be as an actor. It's, I mean, the, you, the pay is great. The visibility is fantastic. You're in a machine. You're vetted by a network, by studios. It's, uh, but, you know, it's, it's a grind. And Hollywood is unpredictable. So it's a wild, wild ride. And the whole course, the whole, main focus is to really keep the ship upright um but either way it's a great show i'm honored to be um a part of it and we begin shooting season two in july which will air in the fall um so i mean you already told people where they can find their show right cbs okay yeah. what if cbs.com you can you can download all so what the if past like episodes. Yeah. So what if they can't find like our are, are reruns playing on TV or how does someone go find what you already did? Obviously, you can't see next season, but like someone. So for SWAT, you can go on uh, if you have Time Warner or you have cable, it should be on demand. And then if not, you can go to CBS.com. You can look up past episodes. TV landscape is changing just with um, all the streaming services and everything. So CBS is trying to go digital with their content. So you can watch all you can buy seasons in advance, uh, but it's a good show. It's I, I wouldn't you know, if it was bad, I would still work on it because I'm an actor um, and I would make the best of it. And I'd be grateful for the job, but it's actually a really good show. Shamar Moore is a star. Um, and so it's entertaining. It's it gets your mind off of this crazy conspiracies out there that people <laughs> obsess about. All so the time. SWAT deals with dispelling conspiracy <laughs> theories. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. All right. See. Fights. Well, it fights the unknown. So the more you know, the more you watch, then the more you can, you know, talk about. It's good. It's only good things happen if you watch SWAT in your life, is what All I'm right. trying to say. All right. Let me, uh, I got to text Elliot really quick a technical question about our first, our first guest is not ready yeah. yet, but I'm just, I'm going to ask Elliot because Elliot normally patches our guest in. So bear with me. Dinner time Messina should provide hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Is there, can we do virtual hors d'oeuvres? How would we do that? I mean, he should have something. The spread here is not the best. Messina, can you at least like point your camera at something? Well, you can show us pictures. On, <laughs> you can yeah. show pictures on your phone yeah. in front of the camera. How's that? <laughs> That's high tech. I love it. Are you patching Where in? Where Regina go? To she Regina. Was, she was fun. Regina was fun. I liked Regina. Okay, uh, so Elliot, you're listening, right? You can hear this, right? All right, so uh, we are going to bring Johnny in at about 8, no, excuse me, about 8.20.
So about 25 minutes. Johnny, if you're listening, uh, looks like you dropped off there. Um, yeah, help me bring Johnny in around 820, 825, something like that. Um, all right. So we were talking about SWAT. Yeah. We talked about good. your art. Um, <clears throat> did I read in your bio or did I imagine this? Or did you tell me at our house um, in Redondo that you were in uh comedy classes i've been taking improv comedy for years okay so do you did that before acting right or was it, it was acting first of... and acting class and then comedy or comedy classes and then at, like which acting ones came classes first classes and improv were kind of together and while i was working on different shows and doing a lot of guest star stuff um, commercials primarily as well uh improv was just a facet to my training and so i'd be on stage all around la from westwood to hollywood UCB theater, the IO theater, West side comedy theater. Um, and, but, but improv is a phenomenal tool for anybody, uh, in what they do. We had, a, a, I had a lawyer, a few lawyers on my, on my troop because they have to give a statement to the jury and they have to know how to be quick on their toes, um, invaluable tool, just not a great means, uh, for making a real living off of it's really a, a tool. Correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't make doesn't making a room full of people laugh isn't that a lot harder than like say and i'm not knocking acting but isn't like you know i'm funny sometimes when i don't need to be but like if there are 50 or 5000 or 27 people sitting there staring at you waiting for you to make them start laughing like that takes a lot of huevos to like stand-up like, comedy? Yeah, stand-up comedy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, stand-up comedy. Like, I can only... I have the utmost respect totally. for Joe Rogan, Theo Vaughn, Joey Coco Diaz, like, that fan from San Diego. Like, yeah. that... Because you got your... Improv, you can... As long as you commit to something, it's <clears> funny. <throat> if if you have a stand-up routine and a bit doesn't work and another bit doesn't work, that's what you got. So yeah, because then, like, your 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 vision starts narrowing, Ugh. your butthole starts tightening. Yep, exactly. People are starting to throw shit at you. Exactly. <laughs> Pee comes out. Yeah. <laughs> Man, so, I have I have crazy respect yeah, for those mad guys. Respect. Yeah. But it, it's also it's the reps. It's the reps on the road. It's reps in front of different audiences. How to gauge a room. How to write material. How to be. I mean, just brave. The yeah. brave, brave human beings. But a, an actor. Is all about being everyone else but themselves. A comedian is being fully themselves. Like a comedian is a comedian, and that's them. But an actor really doesn't. It's it, it's kind of it's very juxtapositional to put a, have an actor be a stand up comedian. A lot of people transition into acting as as comedians, but very few actors become stand up comedians. That, I mean, I don't think I've ever heard of that. I mean, yeah, those guys that they 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 hone that skill over years and years and years sure. of hard work i could only imagine mm -hmm. i have crazy respect for comedians even mediocre ones um just it, just the balls that it takes to get up on stage yeah uh, stuff speaking of mediocre yeah i wanted to do a little segment uh with i want to experiment and we could either get someone texting a question like megan elizabeth and Joshua and Regina, or they could be patched in via live video. But what do you like better? Should we give out mediocre relationship advice or, or slightly above average life advice or um, both or both? Both. Okay. So anyone listening, um, Lou is ready to answer questions yep. about getting mediocre relationship advice or bear it. How yeah. to stay single. Yeah, yeah. Anyone wondering? <laughs> Anyone? Uh, I, my wife thinks I sound like Muttley when I laugh, and now I'm just thinking to myself, wow, I sound like Muttley. <laughs> Who's Muttley? <laughs> Muttley is that cartoon, that dog. <laughs> I got it. You know what I'm talking about? No. Okay, so, yeah, you, you were born in the 90s, so I was born <laughs> yes, in I the was. very early 70s. Late 1990s. Late 60s, uh, early 70s. I was at Stanford in the summer of 62, Lou. <laughs> I could tell. I had an internship there. Um, nice. No, but uh, Muttley the dog. Guys, look him up on YouTube. 
And uh, so anyhow, anyone looking for mediocre love advice or barely above average life advice, please fire us some questions uh, via video or text. And so, then, at any time, at any time. Oh, okay. Don't have, don't everyone line up at once. Yeah. Take easy, one at a time. <laughs> All right, finish your text. Muttley. No, no, yeah. I'm trying to see what Muttley is. Yeah, oh, so find, <laughs> yeah but find the video. Find the video. Watch. This is good. Hold on. It's funny. Whenever you see someone on the phone, whether they're even writing down what you're saying, it always looks like it's like something that's <laughs> disrespectful. <laughs> oh, my God. Where did she come up with that? With <laughs> from me, Muttley. Here, start it over. Put it on the mic. Oh my God, Muttley. Put it on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> that is. Yeah, it sounds just like you. Actually, that's good. Muttley, good reference. Yes. Nice, Stacy. Thanks, honey. All right, so. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned is uh, a couple of our sponsors of the show. Um, I'll do it really quickly. Fast and Friendly Cannabis Delivery Service here in Southern California. Fastandfriendly.us, the first delivery service to cover all of Southern California via delivery. Another cannabis-related one is Nug. For those of you outside of Southern California, who you should... For those of you in Southern California, you should be looking at the Fast and Friendly website. For those outside of Southern California, feel free to go to NUG, N-U-G-G. It's amazing. It's probably uh, a better looking version of like the Weed Maps platform. They're not as big yet, but it's an amazing place to find uh, dispensaries and delivery services and product information. Uh, Jojo Electro T-shirts. Um, all this information, if you guys want to check it out, we have a little list of sponsors. We'd love for you to check them out. Groove Cruise, the largest floating music festival at sea. They get a couple thousand people on their ship. Lou. Wow. Yeah. That's... Scooter and Lavelle play nice. on that. Like that every a... single one. Scotty Boy plays on them a lot. Donald you go, Glaude. You go to Mexico? Trip, cruise one of them goes to Cabo. Cabo. The other one goes down to the... Ensenada? Uh, yeah. Well, so it goes Ensenada, Cabo... Um, that one, and then the East Coast one is goes down to the um, Caribbean, out of Miami. Isn't the cartel taking over Cabo or Cancun? Well, Cancun, yeah. See, that's mainland Mexico. This one just goes to Ensenada and Cabo, cool. and that's still like Baja Peninsula. Got it. Nice. And no, unlike Blake Shelton, I drink water out of my thermos. Really? Yeah, Blake Shelton. You know, like, uh, what is, the he voice? is he the voice or American Idol? He's the voice. And he's also sexiest man alive. Yes. Yep. But uh, apparently he likes to put, like, he, he has to use the solid white Starbucks cups. Because if you looked at his coffee, it would be a very clear color. Really? Yeah. And okay. I, they haven't come out with clear coffee yet. Interesting. He likes the, the Russian blend. The Russian roast. Yeah. You want a sip or are you good? No, I'm good. All right, cool. Um, I have enough herpes. Right. Um, one of the things we haven't talked about enough yet, which we're going to be talking about, is cryptocurrency. Uh, cryptocurrency, cannabis, conspiracies, culture. Are we doing that uh, now? No, no, okay, not now. No. I was ready to fire yeah. off. <laughs> You're going to take a nap? Just checking. No, no, I was ready to, to, to ask, to figure out what's going on. No, we can. We can. So I just want to like, tell people, like one of, the, one of the affiliate sponsors we have is Coinbase. So anyone who is like me, who buys Bitcoin or Ethereum or Litecoin or whatever, um, if you if you click the link on our site, you can get free Bitcoin um, just by signing up and using them. It's like it's like the number one. It's like the Amazon. It's like basically Amazon for buying stuff. It's the Amazon of finding what's, groceries. What's Bitcoin or, at right now? Bitcoin is at about. It was at a seventeen thousand dollar high. It went up to nineteen. Wow. So it's funny. I was listening to um, Andreas Antonopoulos on uh, a live on YouTube yesterday morning. He is, they call him the Bitcoin king. And I'm wondering if the feed stopped here or no, those are just live comments. Yeah, Megan was our last live comment. So uh, Bitcoin, 7,700. Oh, Ether wow. or Ethereum, $616. I could talk about 
these different projects like iota warren like, buffett has denounced bitcoin has he not well so cryptocurrency so bitcoin is one of like 1100 cryptocurrencies okay. cryptocurrencies are this project and not all of them are currencies uh, and maybe this is maybe this maybe some people want to hear this i hope but so cryptocurrency is basically digital currency but not all of them are used as an ex a medium of exchange of money so i'd say 98 percent of these um, are probably companies that create a token so they can sell the token to generate revenue for their company which is an amazing project but it's not necessarily like a currency okay like Bitcoin as a as a currency is is not good. Uh, it's slower than the rest of them. The transaction times take longer. The fees are higher. But as a store of value, it's really popular. And there's a difference between a store of value and a currency. Like you wouldn't want to shop with stuff with a big gold bar, but it's a great store of value. Got it. You'd want to shop with like little silver coins that have sure. smaller denominational values. But um, I'll just delve into it for a minute. Uh, because of Coinbase, our sponsor. But for example, like number 11 on the list is IOTA right there. Yeah. IOTA, I was buying at like 20, 25 cents. It is at $1.78 right now. Uh, uh, Are you sorry. You're a numbers guy? You like yeah. numbers? Well, no, not really. But I like the theory behind cryptocurrency. And what, what I mean by that is this. Just take IOTA. IOTA is probably my favorite one. So IOT... Have you ever heard of the Internet of Things? Internet of Things. Okay, so the Internet of Things is Alexa Voice. Okay. okay. It's smart devices. Sure. Okay. So Cisco um, created about three trillion Internet of Things addresses uh, last year, wow. and they think that smart devices are going to, and AI, artificial intelligence, are going to take over all consumerism. They're probably going to take over humans, but. Sure. That's another conspiracy that we'll bring you on another day. Yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But um, but that would be a great show, artificial intelligence, like those robots. Have you seen those General Dynamics robots that were in Black Mirror? Did you you watch Black Which Mirror? One? Yeah. You know, the four-legged dog? Yeah. Oh, the ones that, yeah. yeah. Those are real. Like, their General Dynamics has made those a few, like, yeah. and that's just what the public gets to see. Like, they those, those were around a lot sooner than that. But there's like, and this is another conspiracy theory, but there's public like military programs and then there's the secret ones the secret ones are supposedly way more advanced than the public ones but nonetheless that black mirror show with those dogs and those yeah so joe rogan was just talking about this they have one of those artificially intelligent robots and i forget the acronym or the name of it but it can fuel itself by eating debris in the field of war, right? Wow. Okay. But they're saying like wood, plants, uh, Joe Rogan and his guest were going, uh, that's just what they're telling you so you don't get creeped out. These things are designed to eat the dead flesh of dead soldiers. But it's a robot. But it's a robot. How, how would it generate flesh into energy? Right. So there are devices right now. Uh, so are we just, is this Ray Bradbury? We're talking like sci-fi or nope. is this happening? Do you know this? No, I know this is happening. Okay. You yeah. know this is happening. Yeah. There's okay. a, there's a company in Las Vegas right now um, that my wife and I met one of the salesmen. We were just talking to him and it takes garbage. It takes trash, dirty oil, coal, like compost, like compost, like dirty diapers, whatever. And it can turn it into fuel okay. and or like uh, the electricity and back to the future. Right. So this technology is not new. It's just, it's not really, uh, they don't put it on MSNBC and Fox and what like that often. Cause they don't want to get people to get creeped out about it, but like there are nuclear submarines that can just travel endlessly around the world on nuclear energy. Well, supposedly these AI, like whatever, uh, robot assistants of war, you know, can fuel themselves on, uh, compost or whatever. But Joe was saying that that's like the official story. The, the real story is they, they're eating like dead flesh or dead, okay. dead what kind of creep Joe said. Yeah. Joe and his guest were talking about it. Joe. And Joe has a lot of respectable guests on it, but okay. yeah, who knows? It's another thing to worry about. I try to cut those. I try to minimize what I have to worry about. Yeah. Like I got to eat, you know, 
Yes. Got to work out. <laughs> Flesh eating you know, robots in the battle of yeah, the throes too, of war. Man. You're too pretty to be thinking about this kind of stuff. That Who, often, me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. Mr. Matarak, I'm up ready for my close up. So I'm glad that a lot of people are calling in with pressing questions. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, well, you got to start somewhere, Lou. Yeah. 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 Let's, first, find, let's first, find there. The first few weeks, it's just text questions. Okay. We did have. Um, That's cool. Uh, we did have uh, Mike Lanzaro, the cannabis delivery driving conspiracy theorist, call in from his car last nice. episode. Like from the whack pack. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, no, come on. He, he might be listening. That's not polite. Hey, yo, I think I met him. And yes, you did. A, he is a very, I like that guy. Well, Good he likes, I like him a lot, but he and I also talk about QAnon and the deep state and, you know, shit that, okay. shit that girls talk about, like at, at family, uh, you know, at Holiday Health Spa sure. and LA yeah. Fitness. Yeah. Yeah. Like around, around the coffee cooler, you know, for sure. Is there such a thing as a coffee cooler? Uh, I think I meant to say water cooler, right? Cold brew? Yeah. Water cooler. Okay. Yeah. Or the coffee pot. Yes. Coffee okay. So uh, let me make sure I'm not missing any messages real quick. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, the cannabis hour. Uh, I'm I'm looking at one message right here. All right, I'm gonna keep it out for Johnny in the lobby, and uh, I cannot see uh, the listener questions right now. The viewers have gone down. Oh wait, hold on one second. We're losing people. Hold on, hold on. Oh man, I'm sorry, people. Um, this feed, it froze and I just had to restart it. So I'm going to go through some of these questions real quick. Is that cool? Lou? Yeah. All right. Sorry, people. I, uh, this, this feed froze actually. This is what? Okay. Bear with me. This is awesome. This is amazing right here. Jacqueline Marie. Can I buy a painting and you can personally deliver it to me in Rhode Island? Would you do that? Uh, we could. It's, anything is negotiation. So right? we, had, we had dozens of comments while we were listening to you talk Man, about conspiracies. I, I screwed I was, up, people. I was transfixed. I really dropped the ball here because I thought I was looking at them. The comment feed filled up for anyone who's listening. And it did not keep going once it got to the top. But yet... Your comments kept going, but I did not. I apologize. Uh, Megan, can I be his girlfriend? That is open for negotiation. Yep. Plead your case. Uh, I'm happy painting Lucid Lou. Hashtag passion. Jacqueline Marie. We can paint each other. Oh. That's a, with that's a deal. Well. Or hummus. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we got options. There's a dessert I comment. Can't, I can't stop the Muttley thing, so bear with me. <laughs> that one is my favorite. I'm assuming you were talking about one of the paintings yes. that we were showing so, 15 minutes ago. We'll never know. All right. Uh, I love Which leads I love. Mike back to his next conspiracy. Okay. <laughs> Someone was messing with my feed. It might have been the NSA, right? <laughs> yes. They've hacked the system. Uh, Megan says, I'd like to draw myself. She, I would let you paint. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Let's see here. Hooked on phonics. She is not. Uh, this is by far one of my favorite ones of Lou's painting. Okay. We'll never know. I get it. Yeah, we'll never know. Uh, Johnny Dinnertime Messina. Stories of conspiracy are meant to open the minds of those who aren't aware. I agree with you. Can I buy painting? You can personally. Yes. Okay. Jack says, oh, keep thanks, up Jack. Your, yeah, all right. Nicole, let's talk more to Lou about Lou. Less about Mike. You're so boring. <laughs> I just made the last part up, Noel, but you are absolutely right. <clears throat> SWAT, yes. Did that say rising star? Is that, did yes. That let's go back. Let's put that on. Can we put that on the screen? That. I think it said rising star. Yes, Johnny. We'll be I'll bring I'll bring you on in one second. I want to introduce you properly. Uh Regina likes you too, Lou. Nice. Oh, Meg, let's let's. Here's a great. Now we get to the questions. Here, Megan Elizabeth says, "Lou, what is the best way to stay fit?" Uh, lots of sex. But be serious though for a minute. The best way to stay fit, I there's a pill you can take. 
that answers all of your problems. You don't have to work out. You don't have to train. You don't have to do cardio. Everyone would buy that and want to know more about that pill. If it existed, it doesn't. I could go to a long, drawn-out way to stay fit. Uh, but the truth is... Like high-impact interval training? Like Stop can you give- stuffing your face when you feel bad. Stop controlling. You ha- It comes down from calorie control, portion control, consistency. Okay, it, so that's... a dull that- answer, but... Okay, but that's staying skinny. What about staying fit? What does fit mean? Well, um, I would equate it to like having uh, a good cardiovascular okay. so uh, there's, capability. There's, there's people with like high body fat sta- Like for example, I'm I'm six eight and I'm really heavy. Um, I don't think I'm obese, but I'm heavy. I'm you know I was I'm like two seventy. Okay. Sounds like a lot, but when you're six eight, you, you know, yeah. if you saw me, you wouldn't think, "Wow, that guy's obese." That guy just takes up a lot of space. Um, but so this like is- when I do stairs, okay, uh, I do the long staircase by our house, and that is the hardest work that I found myself doing. I feel like I'm more lean the next day when when I either <laughs> run or do stairs than say yeah. like taking selfies on like that, a uh, uh, stationary bike. Like you've seen that Geico commercial. If you, you get know? the right angle. Oh, the guy you mean in the mirror? No, the chick. She's like, uh, Oh, cycling is my passion. You know, she's doing like a half a mile an hour while she's checking Instagram. Yeah. yeah. You know, Flo's sister. Totally. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Um, what's the answer? Uh, the best, honestly, the best advice I can give you is be as specific as possible. What you want. People say, Hey, I want a great body. What does a great body mean? What does that mean a low body fat percentage? Does that mean you could see all your ribs? Does that mean you don't like, what does that mean? Be specific, narrow it down, and you have a much clearer focus of what you want. If you want to lose overall body weight, you can do that. And a lot of muscle will come with it. You want to lose just fat, you can do that, but it's going to take a different means to get there. But it's what you want to look like, the image you want to, um, the physique you want to attain. Uh, diet and exercise is a staple, but just be as specific as you can with what you want and how you want to get there. And that's, that'll be, that'll be so much easier. Cause if you go out in the gym and work out for an hour and a half and I go out in the gym and work out for an hour and a half, we both worked out for an hour and a half, but I probably have done so many more efficient things to get me to, if the goal is at the top of a mountain, the bigger, the sacrifice, the bigger, the train, uh, the bigger, the, the choice to get there is a larger step. How many steps or how long is it going to take for you to get to the top of that mountain? We want to get there in leaps, not by inches and inches. We want to take big leaps. That's the best way I could put it. So like, for example, would you tell someone change? Like if you gave someone two bits of advice, would it be change your diet and start doing yoga? I'd say, or would break, it be, I'd say get in a relationship and break up. That's the best way to lose weight and get in shape. You get shredded, right? To God. It's <laughs> like when you have your heart broken and like, then you don't eat for a couple months. Yep. I mean, you don't eat. You're like, God damn her. You know, I'm interesting. And then uh, you're, on, you're on Instagramming on your bike. My, you find a passion. Oh yeah, the God. best thing. I used to train clients. The best thing is they'll be like, I broke up with my boyfriend or my girlfriend. And I'm like, you know, I'm not too upset about that. That's good. Do but that good once a week <laughs> for the next eight months. And you'll be ready for your own talk show. So you look good. Yeah. yeah. Nice. All right. So, um, God, there was a couple great questions here. Hold on. Bear with me. Megan says SWAT is literally the only show I watch and mainly because of you. Nice. That's awesome. Megan. Megan uh, Elizabeth. Okay. There's a couple of great questions here. I like Megan. She got good taste. Okay. Life question for Lou. So Lou is going to give mediocre life advice. More than mediocre. No, no. Or barely above average relationship advice. Yes. During the show. So yes. Here's some uh Johnny would like some mediocre life advice. And he says, How do you tell someone you're friends with you really don't like them? You really don't like them? Yes. Uh you tell a good friend of theirs that you do really don't like them because everyone nobody can keep a secret. Eventually they will tell their friend. You can always you can always <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> You got to you got to <laughs> slip it in and say I really don't like that person because no one no one can keep a secret it's a human fact. No one. You have to tell someone. So the easiest way to do it is by talk shit on them to their best friend. Yeah, cuz you don't want to like actually have a mature conversation with that the actual person and, Too hard. Be, and be honest. <laughs> 
Yeah, you don't want to be honest and mature with them. Your friend, you just want to. That's amazing because you never have to deal with it again after that. You know. Yeah. Let me write that down. Hold on one second. Because they'll never talk to you again. So then, problem solved. Kill two birds. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna just write a couple bullet points here, real quick. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jack says, Lou, life advice. As an actor and artist, do you find it hard to meet people outside of your circle? That's a great question. That's a good question. So, uh, an actor is a choice, I feel. As an artist, because you know, people are like, I'm an artist. It's like, well, you're not, you have to produce something. You have to produce a sound, a, a, a performance, or something that's. So, as an artist, is a blessing and a curse. It's your soul, what you are. As an actor, um, it's it's hard to do because when you had so hard to have success as an actor. So when you do have success as an actor, there is a lot of jealousy that goes with it because there's a lot of entitlement. There's a lot of um, there's it's a, it's a seductive industry with a lot of perks. So you want that, you want that success from what others go through. Um, do I have many friends that act? No, not at all. It's hard to vibe with, with actors as it is. Cause a lot of them are kind of, they have a lot of conspiracy theories and of they why they, why they don't work and stuff oh, like okay, that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I, I don't really envision really like deep, intelligent conversations going on. Unfortunately, you're right. Like it's it's. I could see a lot of battles for like the little mirror. Like if you guys yeah. all needed to see the mirror, <laughs> like how who does their hair the Cal- first? The second, Californians, third. yeah, exactly. Uh, no, you you it's 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 hard because I mean, as an actor, you have to show up on when you're working on a set or you're working on a film and let's say two stars get together. It's not like theater where you're like, you're in the community and you're in school and you get to rehearse and spend time and everything. You're getting paid a lot of money to instantly be lovers for 10 years. You have to be that good and that tuned in right away. So you have to be able to open and connect and fall in love instantaneously with someone, which leaves you vulnerable, but also it's, it messes with everything else because to be good, you have to be prepared to be prepared. You have to really protect that, uh, the sanctity of your emotional health and well-being in order to be successful and not lose your shit. That's so I, a, yeah. like if, if I'm doing a movie with Jessica Chastain, I'm not going to get two, three weeks to rehearse with Jessica Chastain. You know, she's a movie star. She's traveling the world. She's got three other projects that are happening right now. I need to be, and if I'm not good and in love with her and believable as her husband, I'm not going to get hired again. People won't believe it. So I have to be able to show up when it happens. Um, so it's, it's, it's wild. It's a wild, it's wild business it's a wild it's industry it's crazy so when you told me you really liked me were you just acting uh the first time okay but i'm back <laughs> all right so that's actions speak louder than words okay good i feel better now yeah. okay johnny hang in there um i am gonna have one more uh barely above average um love advice question answered by lou yeah, yeah well we got time for one more and then i'm gonna take two minutes to do the cannabis hour and then i'm gonna patch you in jo- chef johnny dinner time messina cooking up a conspiracy all right so regina says this is awesome is there anything i can do while at the gym so that the guys will feel intrigued to come and talk to me she's this woman she wants some guys to come and talk to her yeah because uh you usually hear about women at the gym like plugging their headset into a ipod that doesn't even really exist sure Sure. So guys won't come and talk to them. Exactly. I am perplexed that this girl wants men at the gym to come and talk to her. Because there's no shortage of men, horny men at the gym. <laughs> no, but can you answer her question, please? How to get women to come and talk to you. Um, you know what the best thing I think is? Guys always, every guy at the gym thinks he knows what he's doing. And he's like, he's he's got it down. And he's it's, this is how he does it. And how he does it, what works for him. So I think just being really asking questions of, does this, what does this work when I do this and really want to know, because these guys want someone to tell their methods to and, and how they do things. So just show up, wear something skimpy and be half naked. That always helps. But really ask, like during a set, nobody, it's, nobody wants to, to be talking about like, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. There's always time. There's always time to hit on a girl. Just present that opportunity, I guess. But I mean, does a girl ask a guy like, hey, you know, can you spot me or can you give me some advice on how I should do this bench press? This is not a question I ever thought I'd ever have to answer because I thought this happens. Yeah, this is like a unicorn or some. I thought I was trying to stop the amount of hitting on girls at gyms that was happening. Yeah, this is like some UFO question. I don't talk to girls at the gym. 
at all. Why ever. not? I don't know. I don't know if it's because I'm shy. I, I, I just, well, you know the end. You are shy. I am shy, but it's just like, I don't know. It's I, I never do it because I feel like it's such an easy way to like trap a girl in the in the, it's like a it's like a contained environment you know okay well look at the library there are cool. girls at the gym uh who some of them look good in their gear sure. so you have to be attracted to some girls at the gym right well if a girl keeps working out hard that's the best way for to get a guy to come talk to you is to be in shape and like really get into it so she looks like she could actually go out to a nightclub without having to do much more makeup it then that's probably yeah. not the look you're looking for though right if you want to get hit on the gym yes yeah but that doesn't look like you're really putting it you're like like that girl's not really going hard in the paint like she's not sweating and what if she was sweating and going hard in the paint and fully made up wow i mean you that's just, like hedging your bet you just blew some minds right there write that down all right um so elliot if you can hear and johnny if you can hear i do not see johnny in the waiting room and i don't know how to get him in the waiting room so if you can help me with that i'd really appreciate it i elliot i see you in the lobby and i don't see johnny so i'm gonna go to another question it's june already june oh you're right so great isn't it that we're alive and breathing um let's see here this is fun would you rather be the smartest in the room or the funniest are you asking me I'm or asking just you. is that a rhetorical question no because you think you're the smartest and the funniest no i i would like to be the funniest. I funniest. don't. I don't think people want to hear about quantum physics no. at a little cocktail event. No. I think they want to be. Think. I mean, I think a lot of women will tell you too. They would rather have someone make them laugh. Yes. Than explain how uh, Saturn actually revolves around Venus and not yes. the other way around. True. Yeah. Who does Jacqueline say? Jacqueline saying. I think it's important to find someone you can be yourself with and to find someone who's your best friend and the relationship will be effortless. Absolutely. Someone who the people have always told me that they can be themselves around me. I never knew what that meant, but now I see that it's like, you just uh, don't judge. You know, you allow someone to be appreciate someone for who they am. Don't try to change anyone because they're just going to show you how they can change. And when you turn around, they're going to go back or when they're comfortable, you're going to go back to where you are. Just accept it. And if you don't accept it, get out quick okay answer another question here let's okay. see here good question jacqueline very inspiring still waiting on johnny miss dinner time messina's hors d'oeuvres yeah i can't oh here we go here we go johnny messina is getting added into the all right oh i love it johnny's got a shirt off so oh, johnny man. if we can't hear you because you're in the lobby oh, man. but stay in the lobby for he's painting Okay, cool. I'm going to do the cannabis hour real quick Is and then hang in there. All right, so we're going to answer. Is he fully naked? I, God, I hope not. <laughs> Please keep your camera like neck up, Johnny. <laughs> okay, people, so keep keep the Oh, my God. So for people who just, I just saw a couple of new viewers tune in. Johnny's got jokes. Oh, uh, he's, oh because he's shirtless painting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's scary yeah. and yeah. exciting at the yeah. same time i'm so, fully aroused uh so for people who just a couple people just tuned in um uh, i'm gonna do i'm going to the cannabis hour here real quick and then um uh, but for the next hour hour and a half or however long the show goes lou is going to answer barely above average relationship questions and and give barely. barely above average answers. I'm sorry. We stay barely. Yes. Barely. And then for people who have life advice that they're seeking, Lou is going to give mediocre life advice. Yes. Okay. More than mediocre. Because we're just there. Barely yeah. above. Yes. Barely. Barely mediocre. Okay. Uh. So we can't. We can't. <laughs> Johnny, we can't hear you. Yet. Okay. So people. So every episode, we do a thing called the Cannabis Hour. Uh. This time, I wanted to show people, the for those watching on Facebook Live and hopefully YouTube, 
This is the longest joint in the world by Raw. Raw is a famous uh, rolling paper company. Well, that's a box. Of well, things. okay. That's a really good point you bring up. Yes, yes. Okay. So this is called a challenge cone. And Fast and Friendly started giving these out to their ultra VIPs for their birthday with a handwritten birthday card. And it was a really cool program that uh, Gary Vaynerchuk inspired through his book, The Thank You Economy. And then we started making them for sale. Uh, let me hold this up. So for anyone watching, so you can't really tell the scale. This is 24 inches long. Where do you stick that? Okay, hold on one second. <laughs> what do you mean stick it? I want to learn more. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so this thing needs two hands. Wait, hold on a second. I guess the only way to really see the scale, Luke, can you zip down your pants? <laughs> you need to help. Um, there we go. Yeah. So you need, so this has nine, for those who are listening on iTunes in a couple of days, this thing has 90 grams wow. of high quality shake on the inside of it. And it, that's, this is, anyhow, that's, and it's got three grams of wax in the tip of it. And, um, and this thing is, you need like three hands to just to hold it. And then someone else has to light it. I mean, that's not, it's not, you can't be used like a regular. Tent. No, this has to be smoked at bar mitzvahs. Got it. Quinceañeras. Okay. No, quinceañeras. Quinceañera. And, or, uh, um, si. several Jewish holidays. Or they a, like these. Like a jubilee. Weddings. Weddings. A, okay. Wedding a jubilee like that. is that a pun? A jubilee? No, a jubilee like is a fiftieth a... anniversary. Oh, I thought you meant. I thought a. <laughs> I thought you were making. I thought a, you were saying a jubilee <laughs> was like where a bunch of Jews got together <laughs> and had cake and a punch. jubilee. Oh, okay. I get that and smoke weed. Oh, okay, yeah, no. and smoke weed. Why is the filter so long? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, because it can be used as a periscope when you're done with it. Okay. What What happened if you were to smoke that by yourself here? You would probably be running down the street naked <laughs> with a couple of paintbrushes in your hand. <laughs> and you'd uh, run over to Johnny Messina's house and start painting with them. <laughs> All right. So that is the challenge cone wow. from Raw. And are you uh, are you showing this? Are you showing off your challenge cone? Or are you are you offering this up for all? No, these are actually you can buy these at fastandfriendly.us. So just Google fast and friendly cannabis delivery service. How or much are those things? uh these are $150, but really it's just like something you want to smoke at your 50th birthday party or your quinceanera. Um, like a or, bottle of Cristal or something. Yeah, something like that. Exactly. And, oh, one other little thing I got here. bigger than that? Uh, not, there's nothing bigger than that. Okay. At least on this planet. Okay. They do. On... <laughs> I was like, on this podcast. I was like, okay. <laughs> And then also for those that are looking, I got invited to Tommy Chong's birthday party uh, a week ago, and I got this at the birthday party. Check it out. It's pretty cool. It's a little Tommy Chong. Happy 80th birthday, Tommy Chong. Nice. So if anyone's listening on iTunes next week and you want to see this, like go to YouTube or go to Facebook and just type in Mellow Riot. We got any more comments? You... Yeah, we have a comments. We're going to patch in... Our friend and master chef, Johnny Dinnertime Messina. He is an old friend of mine. You've known him for a while. Yeah. I saw him at Shade Hotel a week ago. Up at, There was a cool little house music uh, pool party going on there. In Manhattan? And we, yeah, Manhattan Beach. Nice. And we started talking uh, conspiracy theories because I found out he and I um, both believe in military bases on the... <laughs> Okay. The, in the middle of the earth the denver airport <laughs> yes that dude that okay. don't even get me started okay you and the Jay-Z. satanic murals okay. on the floor and on the wall that that's a whole nother very no, talented chef yeah I'm, thank you for segueing back into yeah, yeah. cooking i'm gonna get johnny on right now hold on one second johnny here we go <gasps> can you hear and me he, and he's live hey how you doing how Hold you on. doing? So, me real- oh, 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 oh. <laughs> happened. It just happened. Uh, it's okay. Anyone watching? It's uh, okay. All right. Here, handle you fix that. that. I'll handle this. Handle all right. Up. So, that's right, what happens gotta... when I come into a room, Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoa. Did you, did you just feel that? Uh, me, baby. <laughs> wow. 
I know, right? So, Johnny, tell people who are listening and watching um, how you became a chef and at the level that you're at. Wow, man, a lot of hard work and just—I mean, my mom, my mom originally was the my, my matriarch uh, chef, so I, she just wanted me to learn how to cook and clean, so I didn't have to um, just get away. Do it. Well, yeah, too. But uh, yeah, she's like, I'm tired of doing this all the time. So she taught me how to do it. I started at three. I was in charge of making the meatballs when I was a little guy. You know, on Sundays, we'd have the big family dinners. But uh, as time went on, I honestly wasn't planning on being a chef. It just kept coming and I kept doing it. And um, I got some great mentors uh, and I just kept going. And then I got to L.A. I worked for uh, Wolfgang, worked for Crustacean, worked for some great companies. And um, I just I've just been around it and submerged in it for so long. It's now become a passion of mine, and it's something that I loved about being coming on with with Lou because I knew Lou's is uh, conscientious about nutrition and whatnot. So it, 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 a little segue for us to uh, to know what you're actually putting in your body. You know, you got to kind of learn the art form, if you will. I liked what you said earlier, Lou. You were talking about uh, getting it submerged into your art. Uh, that's how I get when I cook. I'm just nice, man. Yeah, so I, I feel you, man. Nice. Especially with the nude painting was uh, an inspiration. So I figured yeah. I'd give it- I got skippies on, but it's just about, it's almost there. <laughs> but either way, you're an artist because you're creating, you're taking raw ingredients and you're creating flavor marriage and, and all that aromas. And you know what I mean? You're creating, you're producing that. Which so is many great. dimensions to it. It's art you can taste and then you can start to eat it. So uh, I, I don't know. I just, I think for my, my purposes, it became a passion. And for the last 25 years, it's been, uh, you know, as a professional, it's been, it's become, uh, I don't know, I kind of, my whole existence is kind of cool. So we're building on it. Hey, I just want to uh, give a shout out to our friend, Julie, who's listening. I, I, I'm not keeping up with the comments fast enough. What's up, Julie Costello? Uh, I'm going to get to your shout out here in a second. Um, I just want to say thanks for ch- texting us, chiming in. I'm going to get, I'm going to, uh, we may even have, Johnny Messina give mediocre love advice here in a second too. I sent you guys a question earlier. I know, dude. I want to get to it here in a second. Be nice to I want to. Um, so, I had a couple of ideas um, for this sh- podcast, and it was either to let you expand on what you wanted to share. So, just so people know, Johnny uh, and Mellow Riot, we're going to experiment with a little episode called cooking up a conspiracy so but it has to be like health related food related water related air related because johnny's a chef and he's very uh organic and whatnot or at least a lot of his ingredients and so like he could probably go deep in the paint with like gmo food monsanto um why is there fluoride in our drinking water do you cook with that water do you use filtered like like tell tell lou and i two or three things that you wanted to bounce off lou and let him pick a direction or would you like to just take it the direction you want to go can i get a question like start off as something yeah what's yo what's up with canola oil uh what is what is canola oil let's start with the fact that it's used as an industrial lubricant it's uh it's a natural ingredient it comes from the same type of seed as mace so it's actually a seed. And what they do is they compress it and they get that oil out of it. And the benefits of it is it's a high viscous, uh, not high viscous, it's a very well uh, controlled lubricant and it works at higher temperatures. So when you get okay. machining that operates at wicked high temps, you know, plus 500, it still doesn't break down and smoke, which kind of creates the open door for, for cooking. Because when you get a pan, you're at 350 degrees and higher, they'll use canola oil because they really weren't, paying attention to the health uh, implications of it. So canola oil, I switched a long time ago. And okay. even though there's plans, I've gone to grapeseed oil, uh, which grape is, seed. I got a Better good than olive oil? Um, it depends on your 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 application. Uh, there is okay. olive oil on one spectrum, really viscous, very rich flavor, at a low smoking point, which means when you put it in the pan, it'll start to burn quickly. Then it got loses, it. It loses its, its, its basis. But uh, grapeseed, on the other hand, uh, high in omegas and it's got an amazing uh, health implications. It, it browns like butter does, but it's not so yeah, heavy. Yeah. yeah, it's actually it's amazing. It's it's almost like a miracle uh, uh, switch off. But then again, you don't have the flavor uh, that you would with olive oil. My mom's on this kick, uh, palm oil, and she's like anti palm oil because you'll you'll eat Nutella and you'll be loyal to the brand Nutella, but they won't tell you 
that they'll start adding palm oil in to, yeah. to fill some ingredients. They won't tell you that. So then they're just going to kind of cut costs and you'll be consuming this palm oil, which has gotten a bad rap. And canola oil is kind of in that group. And so people are feeding you oils. And I think the next big wave in the health business and, in, and health and food is oils and being just more aware of what oils, grapeseed oil, olive oil. Because right now people are like vegetable oil. What, can we get specific? I think it's, it's almost going to be like wines and you know how everything is like matures. Oils goes rancid. Oils mature. Keep an eye out. Yeah. you The palm oil is good because palm sugar and palm oil. There's two, there's two setbacks. There's the health setbacks. And then there's just the destruction of a whole palm tree. I mean, there's yeah. things just sprouting out of the ground left and right. You get a prime tree that's ready for palm sugar or palm oil. You're destroying a lot of the economy, ecology. So that, that's a tough uh, a hit right there. But then palm oil and palm sugar have really become, they're not, they're not favorable health components. They're not no. they're doing well as people would suspect. But you got to watch. No. Change the names and the ingredients. If you're looking yeah. for specific, they'll, they'll get yeah. shipped. House, you know? John, Johnny, so uh, take us into some depths that you wanted to go uh, on your uh, you know, visit it's, today. It's, it's uh, I actually I do a kitchen coaching uh, uh, thing where I, I teach people how to work in their own kitchens. I mean, you could go and do Sir Latab and they've sent, I've done a couple Sir Latab cooking classes, but I've I've created my own after all the years of being in restaurants and being around food. And it's, it's, I submerge myself in the whole passion, the education of it. But when you get into the knowledge of what you pick up, it, it, it doesn't suit you. It's like money. If you hold on to it, it doesn't do anything for you. You got to kind of put your knowledge back out. You got to pay it forward or share it. So I try to help people with the knowledge of these things. And so as far as my, my, my concern is, and what I do in a lot of my, my coaching is that I want to give people, the best education so that they can look out for their own health implications and health you know, facets because no one's telling us what to do. And I've shopped with people. Like I'll take my clients out. I'll go shopping with them to show them how much things cost. What's the best way to maneuver your way through the gauntlet of like, man, ah, buy this and all natural and all this, these buzzwords yeah. that distract people and they keep you from your real true health, uh, uh, kind of, kind of objectives. So you got to watch out. Um, and a lot of what I like to do is educate about, what's going wrong with food. And, you know, like we were talking about conspiracies, conspiracy is a dirty word, but basically there are things going on that are beyond our control that they're being used against us to either economize or, or to control, or there's a lot of things like fluoride and water. So I would like to help out with all of the information that I've gained and things that I avoid in my own, my own everyday life and cooking and my, my craft. Uh, like you said, with water, I do not use tap water period i don't give a crap what la says we'll, we'll tell we'll tell people why you don't use tap water tap water tends to be a water source that has been abused to some factor or other i mean there's high arsenic levels there's high uh contents in there that are poisonous to the human body and they say that they they use it and they they treat it and they filter it but they really don't there's a lot of cost in, in filtering water properly you're getting the proper source i lived in sedona arizona for a long time and even the water that came right out of the rock like literally it was a spigot coming right out of the mountain you fill it up that water is fantastic but there's so many minerals in it that uh you can develop kidney stones pretty quickly and being in arizona you, too many minerals too many exactly too many so what I like to do is I like to control my water. And years ago, I used to laugh when I was what, a PB when Mike, when you and I were kids back in the 70s, uh, right. I was people buying Evian water, just the same as I was laughing at people having to pay cash. I was like, sooner or later, going to hook it up to a card. But buying water, it, it was insane back then. We had great water. But now there is going to be a point in time where water is a point of contention and even a currency at some point, as far as I'm concerned. So what you have the 70s like, Mike? <laughs> well, we, we we rode in the back of pickup trucks, like eight of us, like going to Little League. Remember that, Johnny? Yeah, I do remember. Bouncing back and hitting my head, bouncing around the back. And there was no padding. It was dangerous. Dude, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk said something on his podcast that was amazing. He was talking to a bunch of millennials, and he's like, you guys actually will not remember this, but when you left your house in the morning – uh, your parents couldn't get in touch with you until you know dinner time until you got home. Yeah, uh, we're over here, John. What are you looking for? I'm my charger. I just noticed that my my batteries went low. This uh, this link is kind of draining it. <laughs> so I have my uh, assistant over here is helping with my charger. <laughs> oh, Gary Vayner. Mike, uh, I want to interrupt. Hold on, let me finish this thought. Let me finish this thought. So Gary Vaynerchuk speaking about what it was like growing up in the '70s. Gary Vaynerchuk just said something awesome to all these uh, millennials. He's like. When you were at school in class, 
you had to tell your friend, okay, meet me at 415 by the fountain at the shopping mall, you know? And if you were there and the guy's, and, and the guy's mom was 10 minutes late and you left like eight, two minutes before your friend got there. That was it. You know, there was no way to communicate with your buddy like that. You missed your window. That was it. And your mom had no idea where you were at. She couldn't text you. Like you came home when it was dark and, uh, and that was it. There was a lot of intuition back in those days. And then, you know, we don't rely on our intuition anymore. Technology just cut all of that out and it just but gets getting- more and more to where we're. We're getting off track a little bit, mainly yeah. because of me. I apologize. Where were we going, like, where were we going with uh, that? Well, you were either going to tell us why they went away from natural sugars. And like, I think one of the biggest scams in the history of food are is artificial sweeteners. Like, uh, I, just, but, I was just looking at stuff on that today. You know, okay. I'll tell you a good story. It was a catering story, two seconds. I went and did this job. I was working for Crustacean, and it was a very high, high-end client. It went all Johnny, close some of your windows. Hollywood, to the point where literally this house that I was in was peeing on. I think we're losing. Johnny, I got to take you. I got to put you into the waiting into the waiting room uh, until you close some of the windows on your computer. Johnny be good. I was ready. Johnny, uh, if you're listening to this, uh, close some of the windows on your computer and uh, come back into the lobby. Click on that link again and come back into the lobby with us. Let's check the comments. Yes. Okay. Uh, Kimberly says, do yoga with me. Do you do, do you do yoga? Abs, huge fan of yoga. Huge fan. Is that how you get those guns? Is that how you got your guns? I'm hyper flexible. Okay. My hamstrings and my glute tie-ins are from yoga, hundred percent. Okay, I like I like sweaty women. Is that weird? Uh, no, it's not weird at all. I enjoy a sweaty woman. That's good. That's good. Um, how about this? Where is the best place to meet potential mates? I.e., not a bar, grocery stores? Question mark. The beach? Question mark. And how do you approach them without the creeper effect kicking in? Every time I approach someone at the market, they look at me like I'm insane for even just trying to communicate. No. So you need to answer the question, but oh, it needs to be, oh. <laughs> it needs to be mediocre love advice. Where to, where to meet them. I think, honestly, I think the best place to meet people, um, potential mates, potential mates. We got to be specific people. Yes. Like, the question mean, is, like, the question is specific here. Like mates, like life partners. No, not like an Australian buddy. Okay, <laughs> like an Australian. Yeah, like friend. yeah, like a potential life partner. Uh, the best place to meet people is really walking down the street. Give someone a fist bump if you think they're at all interesting. Just put out your fist. It's unoffensive. For a second, there'll be some apprehension, but it's the best way to meet mates. You got to go after who you like. The library is great. Just start talking to someone. Just start bringing up the current events um, because they'll have to tell you to be quiet. That was my question. Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey. hey. Um, and then uh, uh, Lou, Julie yeah. Costello Meal says, uh, my friend, by the way, where do you stick it? I think she was referring to the um, 24 inch challenge. Phone. <laughs> The twenty-four inch joint. Where do I? Where do I stick it? You obviously well, can't. Well, you can't stick it in your glove box. You I'm can't. not. I think she was referring to like what storage compartment would this fit in? I think it, it's too big for the glasses container in the car. I would put it. Or was it a sexual question? Do you think she was asking? I I I, I can't read into it that far. Sorry. So where would you stick this? Where would I stick? Probably in my overhead visor, somewhere where it wouldn't be a distraction. You would need to be driving a truck though, probably, or a big truck. Yeah, but I mean, it's, at least it's overhead. All right, cool. Um, okay. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Johnny, bear with me one more second. Okay. There's uh, another question here. That's cool. Lou, how about some dating advice for shy girls? Uh, remember, it needs to be barely s- above average. Slip it in the DM. Slip it in the DM. It goes down in the DM. You know, you know the yes. DM is? Yes, direct okay. message. Yeah. Shy, uh, yeah, if you're shy, the DM is where it's at. This is where our life and this is where uh, this is where people are going. Just slipping it all up in the DM. That's right. <laughs> yeah. High efficiency. 
Why are you laughing, Johnny? I'm too old for he's, this. He's in the DM. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny. Yes. So sorry. finish finish up uh, cooking up a conspiracy. Get go go hard in the paint with one of the topics you wanted to talk about. Uh, you know, uh, wa- water is a huge component. You guys were talking about oils. I've been I've been educating people on oils for a long time. Um, what what's, what do you think is more interesting? Tell people. Well, the the oils are lose right. That's going to be like the next frontier of like yeah. uh, olive oil for sure. 100%. Or but like getting getting rid of the bad oils and just sticking with organic. But that's, most people don't. True. Most people don't think of of you know they don't think about the oils they're using on their food. Most people. No. Um, they don't. They don't but, know what's the difference. They don't know what those well, were. While you're on while you're on water, tell people why fluoride is in our drinking water. Ah, fluoride. Let's go back to nineteen. 19- 28, probably 1930, a uh, little group called the Nazis. They were doing uh, human experiments. And, and I hate to say this, but both Nazi Germany and Cuba, two areas of life, were not subject to uh, restrictions on using human beings for testing. And so the Nazis, I hate to say it, were leaps and bounds ahead in medical history because they were able to operate on actual human beings and do these crazy studies. And it was something they took far and wide. And in Cuba today, they still allow human testing. So you find direct answers very quickly. So back in the day, the Nazis did some experimentation with fluoride in water. Now, fluoride is a, is a mineral that's found it randomly in, in, in the earth, but they actually apply it to water. It makes it taste sweeter. So when you taste water and it tastes good, like for instance, I hate to name a certain water, comes in a blue, blue bottle, tastes so good, and Pepsi did a great job of buying it. But it's loaded. Sonic. <laughs> I don't know what we're allowed to say, you know. Oh, <laughs> anyway, oh, it's great yes, though. Yeah, Pepsi Dude, may come in soon, I, I, I look forward to the day when Pepsi <laughs> is listening to this podcast and sends their legal team. Over. I know, right? That means we hit it. That, that, mean, that means we did something right. We hit it. Yeah, we made it right. Uh, anyway, fluoride in water is, is a flavoring agent, but it also works on the brain. It's a neurological uh, transmission de- debilitator. So what it does is it actually starts to block neurons uh, and their travel. So basically, your neurons are little pieces of information that your brain puts together, and there's wiring in between each one. Well, our object is objective is to try to strengthen those things. Monatomic gold, for instance, that's a whole other conspiracy Anunnaki came down here to farm it. Monatomic gold is a fantastic conductor. It strengthens uh, uh, connections. Fluoride is the opposite. A fluoride will start to work on the brain. And what they found is they were able to do more brain mind control on subjects when they were using fluoride. It also dumbs you down and it keeps you a little less than uh, enthusiastic, if you will. So there's okay. been a lot of a lot of controversy as, to, as far as what it does, and it gets put into our water supply regularly, uh, along with chlor- uh, chlorine. Uh, chlorine, as we all know, is bleach. Uh, is put in the water to kill any bacteria. Um, I hate to say it, some of our water is rice. Is what? Uh, oh, no. Right. Yeah. Oh, I hate to bring them off. I don't want to believe that shit. Really. And it's 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 debilitating. But someone has to say it. You have to know that no matter what they say, because what do we listen to? Oh, LA drinking water is it's the best in the nation. It's bullshit. Yeah. I live right next to Hyperion, literally right there. And they take, they're taking water and they're recycling it, which we really need to. Because with the water drought situation, with people don't understand how much water is being cut off from our regular supply. So you have to do things like water recycling. And you'll see signs that says uh, water on this, on this lawn has been uh, – it's, it's re, uh, it, reprocessed or something like that. What they're doing is they're taking water and they're reusing it. Right. So All they right. Can't well, make it – healthier um uh, i think uh because you were st- we're still getting a little bit of warbled feedback on your end um do you do you have windows open on your computer that you don't need open let's see like you need to turn all the stuff off that you don't need because it's it's either the internet is uh not optimized or um okay That's or uh, yeah yeah but anyhow, there was, there was a test we, were doing earlier. we had some tests for for when we came on our sound test. Okay, I had those, but we should be good uh, now. Uh, it's pretty good now. It's the Russians. Yeah, yeah. Um, Russians are looking yeah. in my. And uh, I think this is a a good first run on uh, cooking up a conspiracy. Do you have anything oh. else you want to um, add or finish up with? 
you know, uh, packaging and uh, information you're getting up front about what you're getting. Um, I shop three to four times, five times a week, every freaking day. So I look at a lot of the packaging. I look at a lot of labeling and I look at some of the words they're using and I'm like, God, you know, they just, they're suckering people in all the time. I want people to be a little more in tune with, with what they're buying in the stores and some of the better stores that are supplying us with the better product. They need to get their props. I mean, I go to Bristol Farms often and I test every single peach. And even when I was a restaurant chef, uh, 20 some years, I was working with, with providers and they tell you something that you want to hear. And then you go, really? Is that what you really want? And so, I, I mean, I find that, you know, diff there's different choices in beef quality to, um, you know, with something organic or they put all natural on the label, which sounds good. And people confuse that with organic. You know, they, they want to get a question for you, Johnny. If you're, if you're picking out coffee creamer, do you opt for sugar-free or fat-free? Never go sugar-free or fat-free on anything. Period. On anything. Okay. On anything. Never use those. Those two words, those two phrases are just horrible. That's What's stuff that worse? Sugar-free or fat-free? Sugar-free, you're going to go with aspartame and potentially stevia. Stevia, uh, I don't uh, – aspartame, that's a whole nother, another, another show for us, Mike. Aspartame is just – I know, murder. I know. And I, the only reason why it's even on the market is because uh, of some voting that went on. It was, I think it was a matter of five – people that they pulled and then three of them said, or two of them said no the last guy was teetering on the fence and he went with the economic approach and said these guys are going to head back me so they voted aspartame in and aspartame has been playing that evil little back shell game to try and avoid being brought back up to the voting whether it's it's good for you know uh for human consumption and it's not it's been linked to so many so many types of cancers it, it's it's e coli the, the bacteria e coli it's the waste product from e coli that they use as a sweetener Oh, I mean, that sounds nice. Wow. I don't know that what day that worked out in the lab. They're like, "Hey, check this out. The E. coli just shit. Let's use it to, to sweeten gum." I, I don't even know how that even occurs. It's just a really bad option. And the the alternative sugar uh, aspartame field is ridiculous. It's it's almost as bad as the regular sugar field. I mean, I, I was going to tell you the story. I ended up in the sugar cane king's house. He's got two Picassos in there, and this is the house they spend six weeks in out of the year. There's a yeah. lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. That, million and a half dollars chandelier and, and this guy just does sugar like the, it's now, not on but real sugar or artificial sweeteners he's the or sugar oh well, he was using yeah, the booger sugar it's like scarface his house was like the the, the, the scarface of, of sugar it was I mean, it kind of gets to that point it's like the coffee leaves tobacco leaves like there's so much money and the, and these these industries are just like centralized especially the ones in like the jungles when you need that optimal um agricultural like ideal like circumstance like the cocaine yeah. leaves all that stuff that's in the jungles billions billions that are just buried and lost the jungles right. are being raped daily minute yeah. by minute for every resource they've got and you know it's going to come back to bite them in the ass that stuff's there they're, they're digging up there's bacteria that are coming out of nowhere that like are I just saw a documentary bananas did you see that one about no. the dull oh. bananas you see that like yeah. it's crazy like they're decimating the banana farms in like guatemala or wherever somewhere um and Dole but, came in and tried to crush like the market because they're their big business and it was, he was a gangster. Was, he was yeah. a total gangster. He basically uh, he just subjected the whole banana industry and sort of taken over. And he was making gangster money back then. It was ridiculous. Yeah. But the general what I wanted to say is bananas, fish, and, and literally guys in the next twenty to thirty years. I mean by twenty thirty, by by first of all, by twenty thirty, there's not gonna be any fish in the sea that are worth double anymore. At okay, so let's talk. Let's 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 for specific specificity purposes. Yeah. What's the big thing with? I love salmon, farm yeah. salmon, or yeah. the like. Because the farm stuff, the color added, you know, the stuff they tell you not to eat. It's good. It tastes good. Yeah. It cooks well. It holds yeah. the flavor. Yeah. I don't yeah. eat that steelhead crap. Like, that's tough. You know, and, you, know? you know why it's so good is because they put in all the things that you like that are good. Right? They make. Uh, it, they said that's good. I mean, is butter good? No, no, butter's not good. Difference between olive oil and butter. I take olive oil and this little sprinkle of salt. It tastes almost the same exact as butter. I know butter is it's, it's sinful and it's beautiful. Well, but yeah, but like in, with the ketogenic diet, Johnny, they're talking about using grass-fed, unsalted, like whole milk butter, and they're they're putting it in coffee and like making bulletproof coffee. Like sure. these people are saying, we need those fats. 
you do need those fats, but I also say that the the the, the byproduct of butter is, uh, and I, I actually saw it in a movie. It was right on point. Uh, there's so many things that you can catch in a, in, in a glimpse, but. It talks about butter being an actual, it's like a silt in your system. So when it comes to your cardiovascular system, that that grain from the cream that makes you so good is the double-edged sword. That stuff gets into your bloodstream and it starts to, if you're a smoker, it's even worse because your smoke scars the inner tissues of your of your vein walls. And what goes right in there? But butter and all that fat. It just starts sticking in there. It starts to build up. Next thing you know, you get plaque and you get a nice big, and your hole closes up. And that's when you like get butter, a baby. It's like you hold the clothes up. It's so beautiful, but it's so bad, man. You got to do it so moderate. Beautiful. Got I've heard it. that people have, are opting towards lard, just like straight up lard, because it's like it's simple, it's natural, it's and it's not processed. Move. It's actually better move because it doesn't have that silt effect. The silt yeah. effect is what gobs up everything. It's like your intestines and your arteries and your and your veins and stuff. And it's just it's slowly slow by time. Now this is someone who's lathering on butter. Uh, it's not to say that when I go have my blueberry muffin. I had I had uh, English muffin today, just a little butter, but most of the time I do olive oil and salt. The rest of the week, it's like it's got butter and salt. So as far as the getting back to your question, Lou, the the, the salmon and the farm raised stuff, what they're doing is the same thing with butter. They're giving you all the best stuff that you want, but it's just being fed the worst crap possible. Tilapia, yeah, don't ever touch tilapia again. It's farmed in the yeah. worst waters. It's farmed in places where they have no regulation for EPA uh, poisoning. So they, they use pesticides all around it. It gets in the water. The fish eats the water, eats the crap, and these things are literally oh. in puddles of. of waste if they throw in this yeah. yeah there's a there's a ton of tilapia when we were living in austin and uh and i was thinking oh we should try this and my wife was like hell no that's that's like not good no. so yeah so it's, tilapia, a, it's definitely a bad rap it's, tilapia, yeah, that's a picture, great story picture, right picture like poisonous catfish i mean that's basically what they are they're eating the worst crap and nobody's regulating it. And that's a lot of the problems with the food sources these days. Farmed salmon sounds like a big game saver, but Monsanto, my, oh man, don't get me started on Monsanto. They now actually have, We don't have time for Monsanto. We, no, we don't, not, not today, but we have, they have patents on animals. So they got all these patents on food. And now that they're dominating the, the, the agriculture, their next, their next move is to go ahead and start doing the same thing with animals. And they have a list of 20 animals that they want to go ahead, including honeybees, that they want to go and obliterate and replace with their genetic, uh, their genetic remakes. And so these farms are pr pr propagating these fish that are like, once they release them into the wild, they're, they're, they're programmed to go ahead and attack the rest of the wildlife, the wild salmon and, and, the, and the waters and so that they can take over. And this is all stuff. You got to read it anytime you want. I've read it because when I heard it, I was like, come on, this is nuts. It's the truth. And these guys are capitalizing on all of our poor education. So stay away from farm fish, period. If you want to get wild, wild caught, do it. It's more, it's more uh, sustainably uh, taken care of. Like you, you catch it on a pole. They're not going out and just scooping up everything in the world. So fish, I'm telling you, man, stop eating sushi. And and right now with Fukushima and irradiation and oh yeah, my god, that's that's, 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 that's Fukushima is a whole nother that's show. Coming. <laughs> that's Johnny, Johnny. Plant seeds, baby, just plant seeds. <laughs> you're, throwing too, you're throwing too much shit at us, I man. Can't wait I for know, next season. <laughs> my mind will explode all over the screen. I know, I know. We're gonna have you on for your own show. Cool. And uh, Come and. On. Uh, yeah. So I'm listen. Really, so I'm what you guys are doing, Lou. I haven't seen you in a while. I'm really excited to see you. Uh, yeah, man. Let's hang soon. Off. So cut me whenever you. Can. Uh, and let's you know it's going. If you guys want to get together, I was going to do a cookout on my new deck. I'm really stoked. So I'm yeah. looking for you to come on over. We'll have a good time. I had a great view. Oh, so yeah. whatever else you need out of me, let me know, man. I just uh, I hope hope I helped a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Great cool. listening to you, man. Great seeing you. Yeah, hey, Johnny, gonna... thanks. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Uh, this is awesome. Yeah. And yep. uh, and uh, yeah. So um, I'll hit you up uh, like tomorrow after the show or something, and we'll talk yeah. about uh, what direction we're gonna go. Sure. And I just I just got my delivery. That cannabis delivery thing. It's freaking godsend. I was getting it before it was legal, but man, these awesome. guys. I wanted to plug these guys, but I don't know if it's okay with your with your station. But uh, hopefully next time we get some cannabis, and I can talk about my delivery service because they. Well, just you do. can you can plug cannabis delivery, but not if it's not our sponsors' delivery service. That's why I stopped. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll get them involved because they're a good company. They've been taking care of me for years. And uh, all right, if you look at watch Vice, Vice says his whole Vice News has this whole thing on cannabis delivery. It's good stuff. 
Love you guys. Okay. Love you guys. Bye, we'll get back Bye Johnny. Bye. Thanks for everything. Thanks, man. All right. So um, I can see Marilyn in the waiting room. Uh, Marilyn, we're going to bring you on in a few minutes here. I want to um, see if there are some more mediocre love advice that we're missing out for uh, Lou. So let me look through our, our messages here. Uh, Marilyn, by the way, we introduced her at the beginning of the show. She is British. She's a friend and she's got some vast knowledge of the Royal family. Yeah. And since the wedding was just on, um, did you watch the Royal wedding? No, no. I loved how, if you have to wear a hat to the Royal wedding, women have to wear hats. It's like, uh, the Kentucky Derby. Exactly. But they're funky hats. It's yeah. like a statement. And they compete with each other. I bet you, I bet you Marilyn can tell us why they have to wear those hats. And I was looking at, uh, it was finding it fascinating, the, the traditional garb that the men would wear. Because he wore that really cool, it was a navy blue military garb because they were in the military. Right. Um, and they how they choose things, why they choose certain outfits. I think it's fascinating. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and so we told Marilyn not to go in. It's actually her idea too, but like the whole conspiracy. conspiracy behind princess dies death okay has been caned to death you okay. know and people have so heard enough i want to know what i want to know is charles harry's father boom mind i want to know <laughs> man look at Marilyn. i want to know all right so we're going to bring Marilyn in a uh, british royal family expert she'll answer your question Marilyn's ready yes hold on one second Hello, Marilyn. Can you hear us? I Your can't... audio's yeah. There you I go. Can't we got. See you, but I can hear you. Oh, you can't see us? No. Okay. Well, that's fine. But you can hear us, right? Absolutely. Well, you look amazing, and and we don't. So that's all that really matters. Or Lou does. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, like yeah, Lou looks very, very, very good. <laughs> yes. Even place. though you can't see him, but just well, we'll take no, our I word. See him before when I was looking. Oh, for okay. The so good, sick. good. Well, I have pictures too. I can text you, by the way. Yeah. That I can't really show on the internet. <laughs> <You're> crazy. <laughs> that may be why we're having issues with the internet. Yeah. Because people are trying to download those photos. So many. Yes. They're airdropping. <laughs> so many photos. Uh, so Marilyn, you heard yeah. Lou's question. I want to know. Well, first of all, on the invitation, they said you had to wear a hat. So that was the reason why everybody had hats on. Okay. They, the, on the invitation, it had hats makes and, sense. And, and, and day wear. So that's why everybody was in short dresses and um, a regular hat. And the men were wearing, well, I think George Clooney wore a regular suit, but you could wear um, uh, morning coats if you wanted to. And a morning coat is the one where it's a gray coat with tails. That's that's a morning coat. Okay. Is it possible for you to get a couple inches closer to the microphone? Sure. I mean, does that work? Yeah, yeah. It's because you know, I I want a lot of people to be listening on iTunes too eventually. So, um, you know, we just need the audio, all the sound levels good. Got it. All right, perfect. Ooh, Megan. So when I was talking with you and your daughter Addie, we were talking about the royal wedding, and I started going into one direction and you can take this into a bunch of different directions so what did you want to talk about today about the royals well the i i was gonna yeah. go to something t totally off onto a, an, another tangent because you we were talking about the crown well the there's two entities in england called the crown the crown is the royal family the crown is also um the city of london now the city of london isn't all of London. The city of London is just one square mile of the financial district. And basically, um, it's the um, financial center of the world. And when I say that, I mean, it's a financial center of the world without everybody realizing it's a financial center of the world. It was, fi it was founded by um, the Rothschilds back in the 1800s. Shortly after um, uh, the Treaty of Paris was signed for the American Revolution, 
And um, so basically the Rothschilds have been uh, in charge of our money ever since. Yeah, I mean, man, that's but that's a global issue with like the, all the different Federal Reserve banks, right? Well, yes, yeah, so, and the th that's the whole thing is that it, it not only has all the major banks in 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 the city of London, but it also is, um, is in charge of the IMF and even um, the, the U.S. Um, Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve has nothing to do with America at all. It's it's um, owned by the Rothschilds. Hmm. so uh because i want this other i want to i want to keep people's interest like i'm fascinated by this but i also want to answer i want i want lou to answer megan's question okay uh and, and again it has to be barely above mediocre love advice more like banal yeah and she says <laughs> do you think long distance relationships work lou i hate to be a i hate to be a uh, a mush but with Love will make things work. True love prevails. With communication and with honesty and respect, you can make it work. So you would even drive to the valley. That's too far. <laughs> no, no, no. I wouldn't go over the hill. But, I mean, if we're talking like, you know, not too far. But, yes. So the other end of Lincoln. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Always west of Lincoln. Going over. No. But yeah, I mean, there's hope for you, Megan. Don't you worry. All right, awesome, yeah. Megan. Th thank you for the question. Keep the questions coming, uh, especially if you want a barely above average life advice. I'm in the business of changing lives. Mike. Yes, I, I want to find out what people like better. Marilyn, what do you think is better, barely above average life advice or mediocre relationship advice? A mediocre relationship advice is probably a good idea because you, you get it from like a male point of view and right. and um i noticed when um lou was talking earlier on it's it's very shallow so that's fine that's good cool. yeah vapid is yeah. his specialty exactly. which is perfect yeah <laughs> empty uh, yeah <laughs> i like empty <laughs> um uh so lou tying into that would you date someone from ohio megan asked again uh would i yeah. If she was if she was shallow like me, yes. <laughs> it would work then. <laughs> yes. If Not, was shallow and lazy. <laughs> yes. That's some of the most mediocre love advice I've ever heard. I love that's it. Perfect. We, Facebook helps, you know? Yes. I like to talk. I like to text on the phone, not talk, because that's weird. While you're on a date though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Manage two things at once. You know? Oh, you're one of those people that go sit at the table at dinner and and um, text the whole time. Uh, yes, while he's on a date. Not when I go to the bathroom. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, Marilyn, uh, finish. Yeah. Uh, not don't finish, but I mean continue. Sorry. No, 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 no. It's it, it's okay. It's a conversation, correct? So. Yeah, um, but Megan says perfect because she too is shallow. And <laughs> self-absorbed. Really? Well, who? The question is, who's this more could, shallow and self-absorbed? Well, you guys would have to find out. That would be yeah. that'd be something. Okay. Maybe you guys could text each other during dinner. So I could slide into her DM. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> While sitting in front of her. Hey, I mean, hey, we could talk or text. All right. So, um, thank Ma you, Megan. Megan, please go to louferignojr.com and send something shallow and meaningless to yes. Lou. And or Mellow Riot. Like we'll hear we'll we'll, we'll handle it here too. Yes, yes. You know? I love it. Yeah. All right, Marilyn. Uh, yeah. continue. Chapter two. I just lost you. Oh, you can't hear us? No, no, I can, yeah. I, yeah. It, it just went off for a second. Um, no, I, I was just the the whole thing is is that I know a little bit about the crown. I don't know the whole thing because, again, we're, we're getting into c conspiracy theories here. For instance, maybe you can help me out on this one. Um, there's a lot. There's talk that we actually are governed, that the world is governed by the three cities, Washington, D.C., uh, Vatican, and London. London right. being the financial capital, Washington, D.C. being the military capital, um, Vatican being the spiritual capital, and all three um, have an obelisk as like their um, 
part of 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 the the city and the obelisk is something to do with freemasons now i don't know anything more about that i don't know what it means i just know that there those three obelisks are in each six, in each mm. city and there is a meaning behind it but i don't know what it means i also but but at the same time it all makes sense i mean the vatican the roman catholic church owns more land in the world than anybody else they are very very wealthy they are very controlling they have there's a lot more behind the pope than we have any clue yeah man there's so many directions this conversation could go um the thing that bothers me is you have all these english people uh and then all the rest of the people around the world not all of them but many english people and many other people in every other country they idolize the royal family and these people don't do anything they burn up a lot of other than generate tourist revenue it's, i'm just wondering like why are, why is there an unelected monarchy still going on in a an advanced you know society like britain in this day and age well it's a very it's a huge question um my brother-in-law would agree with you utterly and completely and he still lives in london um the fact is that the royal family and what the royal family does is an incredible tourist attraction and the tourist industry in britain still is one of its main resources i mean just just look at what happened two weeks ago with the wedding when you have all those horses all the the you know the the traditional way of doing things and it was done spot on like uh, nobody else could produce anything like that it's done brilliantly and whether you agree with it or not it, it was a brilliant production Meghan and Markle's it, father had a heart would had a heart attack and he could he got out of the hospital and it was up to the minute coverage and I was stressed out that week that he was having a heart attack and then I was like why do I care about this? Because the media is pumping it and they're using this to just, it's like they're selling it, selling, selling the wedding. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like I'm convinced that I care when in essence, like it's nice and it's cute, but I'm not tuning in and it doesn't affect my life. But I'm thinking it's, it's amazing how they latched onto it. It was the biggest thing in the world for like two, three weeks. Like, and then it happened and it's gone. Right. And it's done now. And, and who cares now? But they yeah. do. People do care about the royal family. I think uh, an American's almost the worst because they don't have one. Mm -hmm. So they've latched on to the, the Kardashians. Family. Well, that's kind of why we had the British Civil War, uh, Maryland, because we didn't want an unelected monarchy in America. <laughs> but I can tell you, I don't think that's quite true. I think you still do have the British in America. Right. Well, that goes if, into if, the... If, if you look at the Treaty of Paris, it's the, the, in the details of the Treaty of Paris, which for people who don't understand, the Treaty of Paris is the treaty that came after the American Revolution to make sure everything was right and everybody agreed to how it, the, the American Revolution was going to end. The treaty actually cites um, the British royal family as prince and princesses of the United States. And um, the 1812 war, the War of 1812, would never have happened if um, England still didn't still have some financial um, uh, control over America. What had happened was America tried to um, stop um, sending money to England and Britain retaliated with burning down the White House. That's what the 1812 war was all about. Yeah, like uh, m most people have... A lot of people have never heard this, but, um, you know, there are rumors that most people's federal tax dollars that are going to the IRS are leaving the country and going over to the Bank of England. Well, they're not and going to the Bank of England. They're going to the Crown, which is the where Crown. I'm sorry. Which is the corporation you were just which talking about, right? The corporation, they, which owns the Bank of England, but it hmm. also owns the IMF and it also owns the Federal Reserve. So it's. It, we're, we're, you know, it's get, it gets very, um, you know, complicated. It's a, a little, um, it's not as straightforward as you think. Hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of deep. Like a lot, a lot of people are not going to really understand that, but 
no, um, it, it, it's very and deep and it's the very rumor diverse, and it's uh, and it's been going on for over two hundred years, and it's a very slick um, uh, corporation. In fact, so slick that that corporation may be more involved with America than you think. I just love when I see like pictures of Riri and Rihanna meeting these like the like Harry and Charles and it's like there's it's there's so much underneath going on that they are just figureheads and representatives of like this nice fairy tale family that still exists around but there's so much underneath that people will never know and everything uh that making it all work that's making deals that's moving everything and it's almost mm -hmm. inconceivable the depths of which um, of the of, to whatever how everything is working. But you have everybody, the celebrity, and everything on top, and it's like this nice coding to make everything all like oh, everyone's all proper, and Palat they, palatable, palatable. Yes, it's so nice. Well, I, and then it, you see people be like, yeah. Meghan Markle, I love you, I love you. It's like what? How do you? Why? Huh? Right. You know. So. Well, first of all, you have the Queen of England, who is um, probably one of the richest women in the world. And will always stay that way. It's never going to change. She has an, an amazing amount of control. She controls fifty-two countries, even that they're the Commonwealth. And um, does she that, though? Because because they, they say she can't order movie tickets without yada yada yada. So like, where's what what actual control? What can she make? Like, what power does she actually wield? It's um, it's more under it's under the table on top of it you know as far as parliament is concerned she's not allowed to do anything other than she is allowed to counsel and the prime minister she is allowed to veto still um okay. and she but and she has um uh a way of talking to all the commonwealth leaders the same way but she has an awful lot of influence at the same time Okay. And so um, she has influence, and so she has to know exactly what she's doing when she's been doing. Well, she's been doing it now for the last sixty years, so she kind of knows what she's doing. And sure. she's gone through more prime ministers and presidents than anybody. She knows exactly what's going on. Queen Elizabeth II is a very, very brilliant woman. She's a you know borderline genius because she does have the power without appearing to have the power very smart lady yeah what do you um think about the reasoning behind them not using their last name in anything ever is it because of their german descent absolutely absolutely um you know german, the, they're all german of just german descent okay and so in maryland explain that yeah right yeah absolutely the, the whole thing was um back in now this is going back now are you ready for the the history lesson Back in the 1700s, um, Queen Anne um, did not have an heir. And so they had to find a Protestant heir to the throne. And so the closest Protestant heir to the throne were the Hanovers. So they, had a, they put a German um, uh, king on the throne. His name, that was George I. And mm -hmm. so George II was also a, a, was the next one in line. And he was the actually the last one that was um, born outside of England. So George III actually was born in England, even though he was crazy. But he wasn't really crazy. He, he had a really bad um, kidney infection, and which got into his brain, which was very, very sad. So, you know, give him a break. Um, but the, no, whole thing, the whole thing was that um, Victoria... Uh, was came after William the Fourth, Queen Anne's grandson, and then um, we come into the the twentieth century from Edward the Seventh, and he still maintains his name, which is Sax Coburg from um, Albert, That's very German. Who was who was Victoria's husband? Victoria's husband's name was Sax Coburg Gotha, and so that's very ex exactly very very German. So that's still the 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 last name of the royalty. No and, way! Did and, not know and, that. Well, well, it was then. No, it's, it's it has changed because. But what mm. happened was George V, um, Edward the Seventh's son, 
was a, was another very smart person. He um he was the king in night in the what's it nineteen uh, no before 1920, 1911 through nineteen twenty five, and he was the king when the Russian royal family were assassinated, mm. and that was right after the Second World War. I mean, First World War, sorry, excuse me. A little bit late for me. It's after midnight over here. Um, in the, the First World War. And um, he decided that, first of all, we needed to change the name. And secondly of all, we need to make our the royalty more um, accessible. Instead of doing everything in private, we should be more accessible. So um, actually, it was Elizabeth's parents who got married in 1923 was the one of the first public weddings that ever took place in in England because of what happened in to the Russian royal family in 1918 I'm not sure of my Russian history um but anyway uh, and at the same time they changed the, the name to Windsor and it's been Windsor ever since gotcha. Windsor. so their last Interesting. Name is Windsor, Windsor. Marilyn, so uh, Lou is on a sort of a time schedule. Uh huh. And so I think this might be a good um, spot to cut off the royal family and the royal education, unless there's like one more thing that anything that you're forgetting that you want to squeeze in. I don't think so. I mean, if if there's any anything that anybody has a question about, I'm I'm glad to answer it. But I, and unless there's anything else, you know, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. <laughs> We've learned right. so much, Marilyn. And on Facebook, you're you are Marilyn Hall, and you're in Florida, right? Correct. All right. So Mar- Marilyn Hall in Florida. So s- search for her and DM her. Right. Slide in her DM. Oh Slide my. In her DM. <laughs> yes. Prepare your DM. Sure. I, I don't even. I never even heard DM until tonight. <laughs> direct message. I direct know. direct I message. Get, no dirty thoughts. Yeah, you know, get like, your mind out of the gutter. Yeah. No, well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time and uh, sharing that information with us. You're very very welcome. Anytime. All right. Perfect. All right. Th- see you later. Bye. See you later. Well, Lou Windsor. The Windsor Castle. Yes. Um, Interesting. That's hopefully you learned several things going There's on. There's so much going on that we don't know about. Correct. Um, so we don't have any more questions queued up. I know. No, was. everyone lost interest. I in know. This. So um this might be a good time to wrap it up unless some more mediocre life strategy questions come up i feel like i can answer another question and help someone's day i know so anyhow if anyone let's see here oh we hit that one already okay cool so um it's a good amount of comments though how where where can uh what do you want to do you want people to go to your website or do you want them to go to your instagram page instagram would be best lou ferrigo it, jr okay hold on, on all platforms so is it all one word at lou, lou ferrigo jr R R I G. N O J R R. Boom. Instagram, Lou Ferrigno Jr. fan page on Facebook um, is most of the career stuff I do. Uh, but I stay most active with Instagram. All right, ladies. So if you want to see guys too, if you want to see everybody, Lou's SWAT photos, he posts a lot of photos from SWAT on, on Shirts set. Shirts have been off. My pant, first unbuttoned has gone. People like it. Is it because you spill a lot of food or drinks on your shirts? I spill an inordinate amount of substance on myself. Yes. Fluids of all kinds. Yes. Yeah, I could see that. I just don't know what fluid is what. Oh, look. Jacqueline Marie says, will you answer if someone slides into your DMs later? I, I mean, my DM is wide open. So, yes. I mean, it's a hard maybe. Hard maybe. Pencil it in? Yeah, yeah. Pencil in that right. DM. Jacqueline, we're going to pencil in a yes, okay? Yes. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, let's see, what else? Social media, website. People can see your art on your website, correct? Uh, yes. Or is Instagram better? Uh, Instagram is the best platform for communication and for up to the like minute stuff. You know, it's, it's where we're at. Nowadays. Okay. Please DM Lou 
And uh, oh, look, Megan already has slid into your DM. Really? Yes. Wow. You have no some, time at all. You have some social media. I mean, now is not the time, but over dinner, I know. When we go to Havana Mania. So how many podcasts I'm going to have to schedule? <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, so if you have a moment, check out our sponsorship or sponsors section so you can see kind of who's supporting Mellow Riot podcast. I want to thank Lou Ferrigno Jr. for showing up tonight. It was really fun. Good times. And um, if you want to know how you can help out the Mellow Riot podcast, uh, we don't have a Patreon link yet. I don't know if we will. I don't really like asking people for money, but the best thing you can do to help this grow is to, whether you are a YouTube consumer or an iTunes, like, do you like audio? If you like audio, go to iTunes or Stitcher and grab our podcast from there and subscribe to it. That really helps us a lot. Listen in the gym, listen in your car. I know a lot of people who still don't know how to download or subscribe to a podcast. Please Google the question. Um, if you're a visual person, uh, you can watch this high quality video on Facebook. For some reason, with BeLive.tv, the software we use, uh, for some reason, when you download it and then upload it to YouTube, you only get like a medium level of quality with the upload for some reason. It's a weird uh, caveat with BeLive, but they're working on that. So, but um, we just made a website and Lou's going to uh, do a little blast on uh, Monday or Tuesday when I share the iTunes podcast with him. He's going to share it on his uh, Facebook page or on, on Instagram or something, but, um, please go to mellow riot podcast.com. And we put all the different social media links there. So whether you like SoundCloud, Stitcher, Instagram, whatever, everything is at mellow riot podcast.com. And we really appreciate you guys checking us out live, texting us questions. I hope next time someone, uh, wants to be patched in via video, but that way you have to get your hair did and your makeup did and your nails did, right? Yeah. Because a lot of people don't like being on video for the rest of their life on YouTube, appearing next to you and I, you know, unless they have everything in place. Sure. Or they have their shirt off. And filtered. Filtered. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And um, if you can't trim it, tan it. Yes. If you can't trim it, tan it. Life advice, mediocre life advice, you guys. If you cannot trim it, then tan it. And um, message us. Let us know whether you want to hear more barely above average love strategies and advice yeah. or mediocre life advice. I'm, I want to see which one actually gets more traction. Inadequate so. motivation. And Inadequate motivation. Inadequate motivation, yes. That's a... Uh, like a toothless piranha. I love that <laughs> juxtaposition, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, that's going to be the show. Thank you for tuning in. We love you. And the podcast revolution is here. What did they, the guy say the other day that I love? The revolution, the peaceful revolution is going to be podcasted. Uh, I butchered that comment. But anyhow, thank you, Lou, for being on the show. Yeah. I'll be back. And uh, we'll see you guys next Sunday. All right. Bye.